I'd like to open the Deerfield like Planning Board meeting for February 1st, 2021 at 7 p.m. And as per orders from the state, um, we can do this open meeting law uh, over Zoom. And it's very exciting because if we didn't do this over Zoom, we might be actually postponing it because of the snowstorm. So we can continue it. So I, we, I'll start by reading the agenda for tonight is uh, call to order, identify board members in attendance. Then we have reorganization and appointment of board. We'll review some mail, review minutes. Then we have a, a continuation of a public hearing for Dale Whitney regarding 250 Greenfield Road as an antique store. A continuation of a public hearing, formula-based business bylaw amendments and formula-based definitions proposed by Deerfield for responsible development. We have it. An a and r at one cross street we have a public hearing on a special permit for a proposed project to construct a, construct a single family house with a driveway that exceeds 500 feet in length at 264 river road and then hopefully we'll get some old business which is revising discussion of revising bylaws related to accessory dwellings any new business any other business not reasonably anticipated 48 hours prior to the posting of this meeting we'll set a date for the next meeting and we'll adjourn. So let's start by doing a roll call of uh, planning board members. So I'll say your first name and if you can say your whole name and say that you're here. Um, Denise. Denise Mason here. <clears throat> Annalie. Annalie Wolfcool here. Rachel. Rachel Blaine here. Max. Max Antis present. And Mary. And Mary Cloutier here. And John Waite here. Um, Paul Alice, Paul Alice absent. So we have six out of our seven members. So I'd also like to then offer, is the select board having an actual meeting? Yes. So you, you guys want to do your thing? Yes. Trevor, could you read, please read it for me. Oh, uh, yes. Bear with me. Uh... I'm calling this meeting, the select board, board of health meeting together tonight um uh february 1st a joint meeting with the planning board at 7 p.m but trevor has to read the business. sure i can do that um so <clears throat> thank you and uh meetings normally were uh, meetings normally held at the municipal offices at 8 conway street south deerfield they're being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where required <laughs> public participation provided in accordance with the governor's March 12, 2020 order, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 20. Mornings, meetings uh, are typically broadcast on Frontier Community Access Television. Um, tonight, they are recording and will broadcast at a later date. They were covering another meeting at this time. Um, the remote meeting uh, connection is noted on our agenda and I'm sure also on the uh, planning board's agenda, the dial in number if you're listening and want to uh, call in for comment, 312-626-6799. The uh, meeting ID is 911-604-1580. And should you need a passcode, it's 570018. And uh, on our agenda, there's a link to this Zoom. So if you're speaking, you could uh, on landlines, just mute your phones most of the time if you can. That's star six. And if you want to unmute to ask a question, it's also star six. Thank you. Thank you, Trevor. I really appreciate it. I also just want to um, mention again that what Trevor said was um, uh, this is not, this will, this is being recorded. It will be um, uh, put on YouTube as fast as possible, but FCAT was unable to stream it live right now uh, because of the Sunderland Select Board meeting. Uh, that they're covering already. So thank you again, Trevor. Mm -hmm. Welcome. So our first agenda item that we will do with together with the select board is uh, reorganization and appointment of the planning board. And this has been brought about because of a reg resignation of one of our planning board members, which in this case happens to be me, who's been the chair uh, for a delightful 11 or 12 or so odd years. I can say delightful now because this is my last meeting this year. Uh, <laughs> but in fact, I have actually in, enjoyed it and uh, thank the town for giving me this opportunity, but I'm moving out of town. So 
I believe the bylaws state that um, when there's a vacant position, the planning board and the select board together can appoint someone for the next, until the next elections. And we have a couple residents who have expressed interest. And then I think, I, I guess we do that first. And then the planning board also has to um, elect another chair. So mm -hmm. we'll do that. Afterwards, you guys, the select board and some planning board members met the other night. So you wanna take it from here and uh, tell us how we should go about this process? Carolyn. Okay. Oh, well, we would like to hear your recommendations and then we will um, discuss um, the women of the recommendation. Who was there at the, from the planning board who wants to lead this. Rachel? Annalee? You're muted, Annalee. Clarification, yeah. is the vote um, just the select board? Is it a combined vote with the select board and the planning board? I believe it's a select board appointment just for this time and then there'll be elections on the um, first, first Monday in May. Um, May, for, uh, May 3rd um, election. We're, we're only appointing it for actually the March and April meetings. So my, my reading of the uh, Mass General Laws section 41 something, something, something seemed to say that for elected boards that the remaining members of the elected board, in this case, the planning board, uh, together with the select board would do the appointment. I, I thought we sent that around to everybody. Um, yes. Well, what you do is you, I think you make a recommendation and then we discuss it with you and then we vote. And we'll yes, it's a recommendation <clears throat> from the planning board for an appointment that the board would make. And then once that happens, the planning board. Now, keep in mind, whoever that person is still has to get sworn in before they can um, conduct business on behalf of the planning board. But that and that appointment by the select board would be until the election as Trevor's, Trevor and Carolyn stated. So we're really looking for a recommendation. So like I say, some, I wasn't at the meeting the other night, but did people go over the three candidates? I think there's three people who expressed interest. So should we do that? Yes, I think you should. We, we mentioned who was interested, but I mean, there was no discussion. Oh, okay. I, I, it's not, um, you know, we, we listen to what you recommend. It's not our, um, you know, we don't initiate the conversation, basically. All right. So we all got, uh, <clears throat> planning board got three letters. Um, and Jennifer, is that all that you've gotten at this point? Yes. I think you were the one that sent it to us. So. Yes, yeah, so the, the letters I sent out were the only ones that we've received that went right. before the select board meeting. So we have a Mark Brennan, a um, Lori Bouchada, and Kathy Retroba. So we have letters of interest from each of them. I've, I've reviewed them. They don't sort of tell us a, a lot. Um, so I'm hoping that people have other knowledge of them, but let's go over it. Let's start with um, Mark Brennan. Anna Lee has a question. So I thought, Jennifer, that someone sent out a, a request from Woody Pistrich. I did see an email from him um, last week sometime that someone sent around. Casey, do you remember that? Did it come from Sue? No. I don't remember. I can try to find it in my email. Let me take a look. <clears throat> For what it's worth. Oh, I think that was at the, hold on. I saw, I saw that as well. Yeah, um, I also saw that. Um, I think that, you know. Uh, oh, yeah, it was, let me see. If there's been no follow-up and if, you know, <clears throat> it's not here. Oh, that's because, let's see. I think it was sent at the, le oh, Stephen Woody Pistrich. Pistrich. Yeah, so it says, that's why I didn't know. It, it came in late and it says, I'm not able to add this to the packet, but you should see the request before tonight, Casey. And that was sent um, on Wednesday. 
was there a so it was, it was right before it? your your select board meeting it was sent um was there a formal letter of interest yes it, it says i heard from ann mary cludier that the planning board had to quickly fill some vacancies and suggested that I put my name out there as one who is interested because she said that the select board has to appoint someone. If that is all true, then I'm still interested. Certainly I have to run for the board a few times, but I did lose, assume, oh, certainly I have run for the board a few times, but I did lose, assuming that doesn't disqualify me. Would, uh, Stephen Woody Pittrich and his phone number. Thank you. No, it doesn't. <clears throat> Thank you for reading that. You're welcome. Then we have Mark Brennan, who has uh, Boynton Road, expresses interest because he's uh, lived in Franklin County for 20 years, most recently in Deerfield, bachelor's degree in computer systems engineering, over a decade experience managing consulting engineering departments for small, medium, and enterprise businesses, local governments, schools, higher education. It's consulted for companies in private education, energy, defense, finance, and healthcare. For, for what it what it's worth, I do I do know Mark. I could yeah. Who knows Mark? To be a good uh, good upstanding citizen of uh, he he's, he lives in my neighborhood, so I'm I'm aware of him that way. Um, but I know that um, I know he has an interest in uh, this board, and um, uh, he does have also an interest in running. Obviously, I think he's going to, uh, he plans to mount a campaign to run. So um, I think that's his intention. And uh, he does have a serious interest in, in serving the community. So he, I believe he's on tonight. So, oh, and here he is on camera. So if anyone has questions for him, he's there as well. So. Um, Mark, would you like to say something? Hello. Can hear I guess uh, we should maybe have a procedure here. I would suggest uh, planning board members, if you're okay, if every if people want to talk about themselves for two or three minutes, would that be appropriate? Sure. Thanks, Mark. Hi. Hi. Can everyone hear me? Yep. Okay. Yeah. So um, I, I see that you guys uh, received my letter. Um, I. Uh, um, have lived in Franklin County for a long time. Uh, recently, you know, bought a house in Deerfield. Uh, I've been serving on the Capital Improvements Planning Committee. Um, definitely want to uh, serve the town more in a larger capacity. Uh, planning board is really important to me. Um, I'm an engineer by trade. I have an engineering mindset. I believe there's a lot I can, a lot of value I can add. Um, on top of that, you know, I've got a lot of uh, heritage, you know, with the area. Uh, my family settled in Franklin County in the 1860s. Um, some of the Brennans who came before me were owners of what's now the Hotel Warren, put the stained glass windows in for St. James Church. So this area is really important to me. And uh, I, um, you know, really like um, the community that we live in. And, uh, you know, kind of being a younger person, I, I really hope it stays that way. And I want to be an active participant in ensuring it stays that way. So that's why I'm, I'm uh, seeking the nomination for this uh, appointment and um, or seeking this appointment. And uh, as Trevor has discussed, I fully intend on mounting a campaign uh, for serving uh, longer than just the appointment itself. And happy to answer any questions any of you might have. Great, thanks for being here and thanks for your, your interest in serving. I'm wondering if we just go through the, the three or four people planning board and then we can come back to questions. So the next uh, letter I have is from Lori Bouchara. Um, she would like to temporarily serve on the planning board to fill the seat being vacated. Uh, before my career as a teacher, I was on the, worked in regional planning. Focus was on natural resources, not zoning, but it's familiar with the overall role of planning and shaping land use of the community. Interested and willing to spend time learning uh, to do what is necessary to objectively serve on the planning board, as well as the 10 workshops offered by the FERCOG and other agencies. Um, as we know, uh, Lori currently serves on the Energy Committee and will continue in that role. And then many of us know uh, Lori from maybe different ways, but certainly um, she's participated in a lot of planning board meetings and a lot of the um, 
issues that we've been dealing with, especially over the past past couple of years. And I think Laurie is here. So Laurie, can you give us a, a two minute summary of, of why you want to be on it and what you bring to the planning? Well, um, we have to, envision the future we want and then plan to make sure that it happens that way. So I, I do really value the work that the planning board does. Um, I think I lived in town for too long. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm new to town. I've only lived here for 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I've lived in town for too long without really paying attention to all the work that the select board, planning board and other committees do. And I've gotten a Huge admiration for all of that. Um, I am very uh, interested in um, retaining what makes this a really special place to live and strategically moving um, into the future. Um, we have a lot of parcels of farmland, then I would like to make sure that um, the farmers can afford to farm that land. Um, we have some beautiful natural resources here. so. Thank you, Lori, and thank you for your past participation and willingness to serve. And Kathy Watroba, um, is um, I can speak on behalf of Kathy, but if you all want, right. to I'll just give a summary, maybe of her. Uh, or do you want to? Do you have her letter there, Emily? I do. Um, it's did, did the planning committee and the select board receive it? So I don't know that we necessarily need to yep. read the whole thing. I mean, um, Kathy has been a um, part of the Deerfield community for over 30 years also, um, both as a business owner, a homeowner, a parent, and a member of the school community here in, in Deerfield. Um, she has been a very um, active um, resident, uh, has, has testified at numerous different public meetings. I've heard her being very eloquent and also um, admirably, uh, she does her homework. She knows, she knows not only how she feels, but she looks at the regulations, she looks at the issues and tries to be fair in um, in relation to the issues at hand. And I really appreciated that. Um, in her letter, she spoke of having an emphasis on collaboration and looking at collective interests of the town, um, the businesses, the residents, um, the needs for us to, as she says, grow in a solvent and equitable manner. And um, I think that really is a very, um, admirable goal and um, she wants to listen also to the people of Deerfield and not just be elected to the board and do her own thing. She's planning on listening to people of Deerfield and also, um, you know, hopefully moving on and continuing to uh, run a campaign in the, in the spring. So um, I think she would be an excellent, uh, an excellent choice. She's not here this evening as she had a um, prior uh, work commitment that she couldn't change. All right, and we and we didn't expect people to be here, so that's not a, a major thing. But thank you. So, planning board, you have discussion or questions for anybody? Denise, just have a question for Lori. So, Lori, so you want to fill fill the post? I mean, do you want to continue? Will you um, do a campaign in the spring if you? I mean, that's not, that's not really my intention, no. Okay, so you just want to fill the spot until, okay. Yeah, right. I wasn't sure how many people were going to step up to volunteer, so I offered. <laughs> okay, okay, thanks. Yeah, I just wanted to know because you hadn't mentioned that. Okay. Hmm. Does anyone want to speak on behalf of uh, Woody? I guess I, I will. I will just say that um, I know that Woody has, um, over the years, has tried um, multiple times to um, 
run for the planning board. He has been unsuccessful, but he's always accumulated a few votes and um, he has definitely been interested over the years. So I would just want to say that, um, and he's always been engaged uh, with town. And I feel like he would, um, he has already committed, like I said, in the past to running, but I also feel like he would be committed to um, working uh, and putting in the time. So I'm not sure we don't really have a procedure to, to do this. And I guess it is interesting that um, like Denise, you just kind of brought up that some people are gonna campaign to run in the next election. Um, being appointed might help or, or hurt, but probably help. So, um, so this appointment could be kind of important for that. But Trevor? Um, I think, <clears throat> So I'm, I'm glad we're having the discussion. We, we do, you know, this is perfect for all this. Um, but I think that we cannot take a vote to a point until your position is vacant. I, I could be wrong about that, but I think, so we have that discussion tonight with your, but um, I, I'm being told it's possibly a joint meeting that needs to vote on it. Is that right? We vote jointly. And it, it, that's what you were leaning towards, John, right? And I was looking at uh, MGL 41, section 11, appointment to fill vacancy in town office. It's a little vague, but it does say that um, the first reading, I thought it was elected boards, that the remaining members of that board uh, and the select board have a, have a month. Uh, well, within a month, they have to meet. And then within a week, they have to fill that um, on a roll call vote. Okay. So um, it does seem like it would be a joint meeting where we would all do that. Um, yeah. So it might have to be a, a, another meeting we set up, but it, it could be. I think my I think my term goes through through this meeting. Through the eleventh, yeah. right? Yes. Yeah. You're, you're Which or or you know I'd be happy. I could resign earlier, but that was the plan. Yeah. Um, so. Um, right. But I think it is important to, to, to have this discussion because we haven't had it yet right. as, as a planning board or a select board. Absolutely. So. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah. sorry, I don't really understand what's happening. That I, we think that the remaining planning board members, which there'd be five of you, along with the three select board, would have a roll call vote to select the next, uh, to make the next appointment. So it would be eight people voting, and and the majority majority would that would be the person that would get it, I guess. Yeah. At this meeting, uh, no, because this because John is still a member at this meeting, and he hasn't resigned as of yet, and his vacancy isn't there yet, so you can't vote on it until it's until it's happened. So, but I think it was important to talk about it and, and figure out you know these ideas so that when we come together to vote, we would make that decision. It does say to the, the remaining members shall give written notice thereof within one month of said vacancy to the selectman who will who with the remaining member or members of such board shall after one week's notice fill such vacancy by roll call. Yeah. <laughs> Clear as mud. It's, it's lawyer language, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, Casey, did you, do you want to weigh in at all? Do you understand that to be the case as well? I mean, we could check with Lisa, but I think. I could check with Lisa, that was, um... That was my understanding after I talked about, well, what I explained in the beginning was my understanding when I talked to Barb about it. So yeah. if you'd like me to check with Lisa, I'll shoot her an email Yeah. Um, right now and I can get back to you as soon as I hear back from her tomorrow. Okay. But it sounds like you guys, are you going to have a meeting, another meeting to discuss it? I think we just either way. I think planning board's got to weigh in before the select board can vote. Yeah. Right. Which, Whether you do it together or not. Yeah, and I think what you're doing tonight, and then uh, John's um, goes through the 11th, I believe, right? Is that that was right. the date you were given? So then we could hold a meeting that following week, maybe Monday the 15th or something. And oh, uh, um, excuse me. Oh, that's President's Day. Sorry. What did it say about 30 days, John? When you just read that, 30 days from vacancy. The remaining members shall. So the remaining members of the planning board shall give written notice to the select board within 30 days. Of okay, within vacancy. the 30 days. Okay. So, okay. so they did that. They did that last month. Yeah. So. Right. Right. Okay. So I'd, I'd sort of recommend probably that we we discuss it tonight and then maybe at 
at a select board meeting in the next week or two, some planning board members could come and and you could do the actual roll call. That wouldn't take I, too long. I, I was going to say, I would suggest yeah. that we could do this on February 10th. Mm -hmm. And um, and maybe John resigns on the 10th or something like that instead of the 11th, so it's vacant. Well, I'm resigning after this meeting, yeah. So. Oh, okay. So, right. That's what I told everybody yep. last month. So. Yep, yep. Okay, Stacey? so why don't you guys vote on the 10th and make it effective the 11th? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, either one, sure. Okay, so... Um, so the, would the planning board um, be open to meeting on um, six o'clock on uh, February 10th with us? Or, I mean, we can meet later if you want. We Whatever can, time, really. Yeah. It usually works better for Rachel if she comes mm -hmm. in at seven. So if we can put them in as a seven at okay. that meeting. Yep. Does that work with you, Rachel? Yeah, I can, it's six, seven's much better for me. Right, right, so then we can start it, but the planning board would, I'll put them on the agenda for the, for seven. Okay. okay. That would be fine. Thank you. Um, and then, um, so would the planning board then um, have questions of any additional questions they might ask of anyone today? So I would just, sorry. I'm sorry. I was wondering if Mark was uh, thinking about running in the next election also. Yes, I am. Okay, thank you. So, can we have discussion, sort of an informal discussion now, or do we wait yeah. until the 10th? Yeah. Okay. No, I think an, an informal discussion. So, I was going to just contribute um, that I, I've known Lori for a long time, and I, I know that she's on the energy committee. She knows the town. She's participated in a lot of our planning board meetings. So, someone who could, I feel like, could hit the ground running with the planning board, I, I would. Uh, say she would be my top candidate, um, you know, and, and at this point we are just filling a vacancy. We're not deciding for the long term. So I don't know if anybody has anything to add to that. And I should say, I haven't spoken to any of the four candidates prior to this. I just, that's just my observation. Mom, I certainly, um, really value Lori's contributions in so many areas and would want to support her candidacy. I would also say that <clears throat> Kathy, who has not been a formal member of um, a lot of town um, boards and committees, um, I think it's really important that we can encourage people to step up if they haven't stepped up before. And she certainly has put a lot of thought into running for this position and I really admire that and think she would be an excellent member. I know this is tricky if we don't <laughs> this isn't something we usually deal with at a planning board. Right. Denise? I was going to say, I'm not really sure. I mean, I, I think it's wonderful that Lori wants to fill the seat. I really, I really like for her. You know, it'd be great if she said, yeah, and I want to campaign too, because I would just love to see, you know, someone fill the seat and then hopefully have, you know, have a, you know, consistency. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, there's no guarantee that the person filling the seat is going to be reelected, oh, wow. but. Wow. That, uh, Jen. Thank you. I mean, I said, you know, all three seem to be great candidates. I, I don't know. That's a tough one. Four. I think we're looking at four. Um, yep. Okay. Two. Right. Yeah. Well, some some people might get mad at me if I say this, but um, I would I would strongly support what Annalise said. With um, getting some new people on the board. I There are a lot of things going on in the energy committee that I do want to focus on. So if Kathy is willing to serve. I, I definitely support um, her. <laughs> if that helps you make up your mind um, in, in that, that instance. Thanks, Lori. <laughs> So I guess maybe what we say is people can do their own sort of research over the next nine days. Yeah. Um, 
you know, I don't, I don't know if there's a lot of precedent for this. Um, hasn't happened mm -hmm. in my 15 years on the board, but. Um, yeah, it's a tough one. Yeah. I mean, it is sort of, because there's no precedent, I mean, it's a little awkward, you know, sort of yeah. doing this, you know. There is precedent. <laughs> oh, um, yeah. Well, I, I'm sorry. Oh. I'm sure you're right. I'm I was appointed yeah. twice. Rachel, Rachel was appointed. <laughs> and here she is. Yeah. Right. Did they did they have a meeting like this? Did were you discussed? <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> what I would suggest is what we did with Rachel and other uh, people that are interested is the planning board members reach out pro, um, on their own time and convenience with uh, um, the candidates and they um, interview and ask questions to the candidates and um, you know. Uh, Kate, Kathy isn't here. Um, Mark, I mean, you know, Mark maybe is relatively new. So, you know, um, this would give opportunities for you to speak to them and um, ask your yeah. own questions and um, form your own judgment on, um, you know, the commitment to working and then, and also the commitment of, of running, um, you know, and, and tr trying to be, be on the planning board full time because. Yeah. I mean, that's the whole point. You you need people that will um, put in some effort and, and do some work. So um, I, w I would suggest Anna Lee and Rachel and Max, everybody call everybody and try to um, just have a conversation. Mm -hmm. So that can be done individually, not it's not a public kind of kind of thing. No, because it's one, it's each planning board member is intervent is intervent individually um having a conversation with the candidates good and then and then you folks are also uh going to fill a vacancy on the zoning board of appeals i believe as well right we already did and oh. um and and um like I, I i intend to call mark because that's the only person that i don't know so um you know to <laughs> form some of my own answer my own questions and so I would suggest everybody do the same thing. All right, Emily? Uh, I don't think we have all the contact info. If that's something that Jen could uh, make sure she sends out to everyone. Their, their, um, their information's on their letters that we all got. Yep. Well, like Kathy's letter just has her address. It doesn't have her phone number. Oh, or okay. Or her email. I mean, yes. I Anna Lee, might I make a suggestion that you email Kathy and ask her that way, there's nobody's phone number running around if they don't want their phone number. Yeah. Out there. Yeah. And I would want, add one more caution that members of board shouldn't be discussing business that's before a board, even privately, as was- Not together, correct. But they can No, with anybody. You shouldn't be discussing an issue outside of a meeting that's in front of a board at, the, at that moment. Um, Adam Costa, our attorney, reminded me of that a board. couple weeks ago. Yeah. Planning yeah. board. Right. All right. So that sounds like a good plan. And we appreciate uh, uh, four people putting their, their names in the hat and wanting to serve the town. So mm -hmm. it's, it's great. Thank you very much. Well, with All that, right. I'll make a motion for the select board to adjourn. <laughs> I will second that. I'll be David to the meeting of the day. Is that a record? No, it's, it's about it's a short meeting. I know. A short, a short meeting. Yes. All those in favor? Uh, Aye, Trevor oh, McDaniel. Aye, yeah. Dave Wolfer. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Thank you all very you much. All. Planning board. We really appreciate it. And we'll see you on the tenth. Thank yep. you. Good night. Thank you. So then we, same agenda item is the reorganization of our board. So I would like to um, say that we should elect a new chairperson. Do we have any nominations from the planning board? I nominate Rachel Blaine. Oh, I'm okay. still on it. Okay, Emily, you second it. <laughs> Who's a... Uh, a, a, a motion and a second. Um, Rachel, would you like to say anything? <laughs> yes, because I would like to no nominate Annalie. Um, I'd second that. Yeah. 
I, I thank you. I think Annalie is, so I'm just putting this out there. Sorry, Annalie, but I think that Annalie is very uh, thorough. She is, follows up with things in a way that has been incredibly helpful um, to move a lot of issues along. Um, she's shown that she has that time to really, and the time inclination and skill to really dive in. So um, that would be, that's my, I, I don't, think I'm the, the one. Just being happy to run a meeting from time to time, but I'm not the I'm not your reliable Jill. Thank you. Uh, and Mary, do you have any comments? Well then I remove my motion. <laughs> <laughs> so if if elected you would serve as chair, is that what um, I'm hearing? To whom is that? It's to, I'm sorry, to you, Anne Mary. Why would you think that? <laughs> Anna Lee. Sorry, Anna Lee. I wasn't clear. Right. Anna Lee. Sorry, Anne Mary. You too. But oh, I'm just, sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I, I got okay. I'm, I got my boxes all in the wrong place. <laughs> Anna Lee. And Max, that's that's what you seconded, right? Anna Lee. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I thought you got a lot on your plate, and it sounds like mm -hmm. Anne Ann Mary, Mary has a lot on her plate. And I go from nothing to a lot on my plate. So, you know, Denise or Annalie, who seem to have more time, um, might be a good choice. So, Annalie, you're, you're one of the newer members, but you, I would say you have come on strong. So if you were um, elected, would you be, be willing to serve as chair? I would really have to consider that and might want to put forward as a motion, Denise. <laughs> well, Annalie, let me just, let me just say that. I mean, I think that um, the, the, you know, at, at Max point, the, this is really a group effort. John's done a really wonderful job of being this out front leader all the time. And there's many a time when he said, help, you know, anybody who wants to pitch in here, this would be really great. And um, I think that, I think that you'd find John's so capable and he's been so capably leadership oriented in for this, but I think that we'd all be in there behind you uh, in a way that I think, you know, we're, or, we're ready to do. Um, I, I, and Denise, uh, similarly, I just think, and Max put it succinctly, we're, we're right in there, we're right behind you, or we're work, working hard, but I don't, I don't see my, my plate is indeed like full. And I'm not, my follow-up every, every Tuesday morning when I wake up, I think, okay, I got to, and then 10 other things fall in my head. So I'm not there and I really appreciate it, Anne-Mary, um, but I'm not there. And I think you are, Jennifer. Um, are you taking public comment or do you want to hold off? No, this is a planning board internal. Sorry, I'm gonna lower your hand. <laughs> Is, is there ever opportunity for co-chairs? We've had a, um, a, a chair and a vice chair. And as Rachel said, she jumps in uh, sometimes. We've never had a co-chair. It doesn't mean we can't probably. I would also, I would also say that every, um, after every election, uh, every annual election, the meeting, because we always, there's always potentially two, cha two new members, you know, there's always two or three on the ballot, right? Um, we have an election at the planning board after after each election to decide who's going to be chair, and unfortunately, it hasn't changed that often. <laughs> but it could, and I think that might actually be a, a thing that you want to really think about is that you should rotate it, you know, annually or every two years because it, it shows people there is a there is a higher level of involvement being the chair. I will say that. Um, but, you know, revolving every one or two years, having a new chair probably is a, maybe a healthier, healthier thing for the town to tell you the truth. So, so would the next election be in the spring after the, um, yeah. So, so to some extent, how you like it. try to, on the shoe, walk around in it. Yeah. So, so tonight's decision is really just until the next election. Yeah. <laughs> Denise, <laughs> you can do it, Adelaide. 
And if you, in two, three months, if you're like, that's too much, yeah. put it, throw it up again. And, and I think John makes a really strong point. The, the point being that, you know, if we, if we have a little bit more shared mantle after a year or you tag out, somebody can tag in, um, you can throw it open. It is a lot of work. It, it, it'd be kind of similar to being co-chairs to some, you know, but there's always one who's like that year, they're their main, you know, that's like the point person. It helps Jennifer and the town to know who that point person is, I think, um, but it could, could change. From the standpoint of open meeting law, how much prior to a meeting could I just um, discuss the homework I would need to do and the, the, some of the issues with some of the planning board members? Is that allowed? Yeah, Jim. Um, so we have a training that's coming up that's on the 9th. So Adam Costa or somebody else from their firm is going to be running that training. And you can ask all kinds of questions on the 9th. But, but yes, Annalie, there is support both from the town and, um, you know, you can like most of my emails that go in between the meetings, I make sure Rachel and, and Mary, there's someone else who knows what's going on. So it's not all on your plate. You know. Jen, would you be- We have great people in town, and uh, Annalie, too. This is, this is our plug for, for Sue and for Jen, who are incredibly supportive, and Casey. I mean, these are people, and we, you know, since you've been on the board, we've been awful lot on Zoom. So you haven't seen that, but walking into town hall at some point in the not so distant future, I hope, you you, you find you've got you got colleagues right away um, in in the town hall. Um, everybody in there is on your side, and they're there to um, make things work well. So that's another big plus. Does that light need to be on? I muted them. Um, yeah, we're always available and we, you know, just, I think it's really important, the communication and we've been working through some of those snags and, <laughs> you know, just if we have, a, you know, Somebody that's answering our emails and getting information and doing the research and and you know asking us questions about how to do things so we can reach out to somebody who does have the answer or if we do have the answer we give you the right answer of how to proceed. So you look well, really scared. <laughs> I guess what I could say is that uh, so to some degree, with the caveat of it being recognizing that we would have another election in June that I would potentially be asking uh, everyone else to really, really think carefully about their possibility of being in this position and that I, and it's okay if you don't vote for me. <laughs> if, you, if you think I'm too, not, too, too green. So I think, you know, again, that's something that you have three or four months to discuss that more among yourselves and stuff. And I think that would work out at this point. Um, and Mary has withdrawn her motion. So the motion on the table and seconded is, is uh, for Annalie to be the chair. Um, any other discussion? Annalie, do you take away your motion for Denise. <laughs> oh, right. Well, that wasn't second. That wasn't yeah. second. Okay. Okay. But, and again, we don't want to put pressure on you, but, um, so oh, how do you, I, how do you... I would, I would, um, graciously see what I could do for the next three months and with the recognition that that very well might be it. <laughs> that's a problem then then we need to address it more right now not a problem all right <laughs> Rachel. i have another motion 
And I think, you know, again, in four, three or four months, I think several people, you know, things are going to be different and you guys can, you know, reconsider or decide again at that point. We just heard Denise say that she's, she'll be more fully retired by then. So you can talk to her about it. And then I could nominate Denise for vice chair. <laughs> Rachel is plotting. Well, I just think, I think that Annalie makes a strong point. I think that the, this concept, like there aren't a lot of co-chairs, it's not a thing per se, but I think if there were two people that were willing to commit to that, I think we would get a lot of things, you know, John, you have broad shoulders, you've carried a ton and, and there have been moments you've thrown up a flare and said, hello. And I, I think that um, every time I see one of those flares, I run for one, but um, I, I do think that it's, there's a lot to be done and it's a volunteer position. So it's not like anybody can walk away from their paid day job right. to, to do this. And um, so I do think we've had a lot of things come toward us in the last several years between marijuana and the, you know, zoning on five and 10. And, and, and it's really, it's, I think the stakes are high right now with COVID. We've, we've certainly felt the press of, of, uh, you know, the budgets, um, shortfalls, et cetera, et cetera. And we want to be responsive in the town, but we have a bigger plan. I don't know. All that, all that said, I, I think we, we are, um, I, you know, you say, you ask, well, like when I was appointed, I don't think there was that much discussion because there wasn't that much interest. It's a more prominent board um, right now. And um that, that's just so that's my two senses I would see I would see um, Annalie and, and Denise and I, I, I think Denise has incredible chops and so I, I, I think that and when John ta you know taps and and Mary or whoever else is on the on the shoulder the vice chair before me you know that that's part of the like the head of the that they work together. So that's my, that's my two cents. I would absolutely feel incredibly much better about this if Denise were the vice chair. Well, then I second that motion for um, Denise Mason um, as vice chair. I'd be happy to be vice chair. <laughs> well, Rachel, this, no. is, this is working out for you. No, I, I, I think it's great. And I'm looking forward to the meeting on the 9th because I too, you know, we're both new and yeah. we don't have the same institutional knowledge that, that you yeah. guys have. Although, you know, I'm certainly willing and able to, to learn, I think as, as Anna Lee is. So, I mean, I, I think it would be great, but you know, those are all the questions that we can ask. I mean, yeah. I'd like to be able to that the two of us can have discussion without, you know, violating open meeting law. I think that's my biggest concern. Yeah. So. So Rachel, are you open to that motion? Okay. <laughs> I am. So let's um let's do them separate. Um, any more discussion? Max, are you uh you still with us? You're good. I'm good. So the first motion is um, uh, Annalie as chair. All those in favor, let's go around. Um, Denise. Denise Mason, yes. Rachel. Rachel Blaine, yes. Max. Max Antes, yes. And Mary. And Mary Cloutier, yes. John Wait, yes. Anna Lee. Yes. <laughs> it's unanimous. <laughs> Yay. I'll Red finish it. I'll finish this one last vote because we already had a, a motion and a second for Denise Mason to be vice chair. Um, all those in favor, uh, Rachel. Rachel Blaine, yes. Anna Lee. Anna Lee Wolfkull, yes. Max. <laughs> Max Antes, yes. And Mary. And Mary Cloutier, yes. John Waite, yes. Denise. Denise Mason, yes. Wow, this is exciting, all right. <laughs> Congratulations. Annalie, I want to I want to hear more conviction in your voice, Natalie. All right. And and okay. this will be effective uh, February uh, 11th or whatever. <laughs> yes. 
I would say after this meeting, if you want to, I can finish this meeting and then you'll Excellent. make it. Excellent. All right. Effective we'll meeting at the 10th, right? February 11th. <laughs> Thank you all for your. And I will just um, volunteer to, to you and any of you that um, fortunately or unfortunately, I'm not changing my email or phone number. So if you have, have a question um, and I won't be a board member, so you can consult with me, no problem. Excellent. And, and I do want to make an observation that a former, uh, another former planning board member might be on this call, John, Bar John Baronis, and, and I'm sure he'd be delighted to, to chime in if anybody has anything to, uh, any questions to get some of his wise um, consultation. So, John, I'm going to put that in the minutes too, by the way. <laughs> All right, next agenda, review mail, I think, um, I saw something from Greenfield. I we were just by the by, just short, short. Um, we are Anne Mary Cloutier is clerk. I think we just. I don't know if we go by that or we just. Do we do that again? Well, no. See that. Well, it's just a change. It, we didn't. We're not changing it, right? No one's proposing to change that. So, yeah. Again, I would. I would suggest that in um, after the town elections, that next meeting, you do do the votes on all three positions, just to make it clear. That's what, that's what we've been doing. Well, exciting. Um, all right, so any, did anybody see any mail that we need to talk about? We have, we had minutes from the January meeting. Um, oh, that was January 4th, I believe, or did anybody um, review them and want to make a motion? Um, I move that we connect, uh, that we accept the minutes as written. It was uh, January 11th. That's what it was. It was yes. January 11th, yeah. I would second that. They looked good to me. Any discussion? I, there was a couple spelling. Everybody likes to make Rachel's last name end with an E, but it doesn't. Um, no, I tried really hard. I, know. <laughs> I have an uncle. I know you can't <laughs> vote me off as clerk. I'm just learning everybody's <laughs> spelling of their names. All those in favor to approve the minutes of January 11th. Um, Denise. Denise Mason, yes. Rachel. Rachel Blaine, yes. Anna Lee. Anna Lee Wolfcool, yes. Max. Max Antes, yes. And Mary. And Mary Cloutier, yes. John Waite, yes. Great. Uh, next up, continuation of a public hearing. Site plan review from Dale Whitney regarding the use of 250 Greenfield Roll Road as an antique store. We have a couple new documents on that. Um, a stamped site plan and a letter from Jacob Smith Engineering and Design. Um, and I believe our building inspector is here also. So um, Bob, do you wanna go first or, or Dale to explain, give us an update or Jennifer, sorry. I just wanted to say that I didn't send it to you, Bob, and I apologize um, at 5.30 or something, um, Ms. Whitney sent me uh, plans and the code review. And so then we went back and forth for a while and then um, she did uh, get a stamped site plan. And I believe they're on the call, right, uh, Dale? Dale is. Um, Jeff. Je yeah. Jeff Squire, right? Jeff, can right. you hear me? Yes, I am Jeff here. Squire. Yes. Yeah. So he's, if you have questions about that, here. I'm oh. just saying that he's on the call. So um, because I don't believe uh, Bob has seen the plans. No, I haven't. Right. No. So, I mean, the code review is going to be important for a building permit later. And what was important for today to have before the planning board was a site plan to show parking, handicap, signage, that sort of thing. Um, I did want to make one comment about the sign because Bob hasn't seen it yet is there's no dimensions on it. Um, it just says what it's going to look like if it's keeping exactly the same that's there, then just say so when you when you it's going to be the same size as what the overall is going to be the same size as what's there. There may be a border around and where the red is may be a dark blue instead of red. So, um, so okay. it's going to be, it's going to maintain the same size as what's there right now. 
nothing's going to change. All right. Do you want to give us some other updates? I know you talked about parking. Um, the parking uh, has come from uh, the review by Jeff Squires. Um, and it is basically, I think there's a hundred, um, enough room for a hundred parking on, if you're looking at the building on the left side, and there's going to be four handicapped park in the front um, of the main entrance. Yep. Um, maybe Jeff can share that plan um, yeah. if you share screen. But the other thing I was gonna ask you is that um, at one point you were talking about selling goods outside. And so I just wanted to know where that was gonna be and how much, and so you can tell the board what that's gonna look like if you're going to have a tent or, and how often that's gonna be. be it, it, it would be a tent and it would be in the back of the property, um, way in the back of the property where the, the road goes around the building and it would be in that back section. Yeah, it wouldn't be anywhere near the road or near the front parking area. I'll share the screen now for those so you can see. Yeah. So the majority of the parking is up on the north north side of the building. Um, handicapped spaces out in front, in front of the main entrance for 100 spaces. There's four accessible spaces required. So we've located those, you know, as close to the front entry as we can. Um, but really it's just trying to organize the existing, um, you know, paved area. So if you look towards the back of the building on the north side, there is an area there that has a loading zone and when we have outside sales, it will be for our nonprofit benefits. And there's an entrance right there also to the back building um, where approximately where, that, where his um, cursor is, only down right to the other corner, to the right. Yep, over here. For other corner. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> over right here, there. Yeah. Yeah. okay. And that's, yeah, right there. That's exactly where I'm talking about. Um, and there's an entrance and a loading dock right going right into the building from there. And that is where our um, nonprofit um, events will be taking place is in that area. Are they of a tent? I'm oh, sorry. Sorry, Emily. No, okay. Are these the, um, the parking areas that are designated? Are those the ones that are there already or are those newly paved areas? The the north section is not paved, where it does say paved, um, but that that is gravel. The front where the sign is and where the handicapped area is, is, is paved. I see, so the north section will not be paved? No. Thank you. And so how would you um, designate each parking spot? Well, that's, um, we've done it in the past with line tracking, um, but I don't know if, and, and Jeff, is there a way to do it with a, a permanent on gravel? On gravel, it's a little bit more challenging, obviously. Um, you know, most of the situations we encounter on gravel are more of a, um, you know, temporary as needed basis. Um, there are some some ways to, to delineate it a little bit more permanently, but it, they don't necessarily hold up, um, you know, during the winter months and plowing. Um, so it really is sort of temporary in nature. And in the back section, how big of a tent and how often would you have it? Would it be? It would, um, I'm hoping to be able to do like every other month. And it would probably be only a couple 10 by 10 tents. It would not be anything um, large. It wouldn't be a huge um, thing. It's just something to get out there and have people be able to come and talk uh, like uh, the wounded, wounded warrior spokesperson or um, one of the places for the homeless people. 
people can go and hand out pamphlets and um, be able to talk to people and so on and so forth. And proceeds from sales during that day would go towards that benefit. And I think, do I have to get a permit every time I have something like that? I do. And I, so I would do that prior to. Well, not necessarily a tent permit. I think there's a 400 square foot limit before we start looking at them from a building and fire perspective anyway. But town might oh, want yeah. it for sale purposes, but I just thought I'd chime in on that. If it gets to be a big yeah. tent, though, then we got to look at it. Okay. I don't foresee that happening. If it does, then I'll, I'll, uh, we'll, we can address that then. So I want to ask about, you know, traffic on five and 10 is a big issue. So um, you've got, you have an entrance and an exit. Is that the way it's set up? Yes. Or are they both, are they both in and out? It's, they right now at this point, I believe they've both been in and out. Um, so I, there's two ways in and two ways out. So, you know, if someone is on the on the north coming out of the northern one and taking a left, and someone's coming out of the bottom one taking a right, you know that that's not optimal. Um, as a matter of fact, it can we could cause mark problems. it. We could mark it entrance and exit too. I mean, I'm just um, I'm just putting this question out there. I'm not saying you have to, but it just seems because um, I think the speed limit around there is it could be is it 45? I think it. It's 40, 40 or 45 right yeah. in that area. Um, and then, you know, as you know, we've just approved some across the street, which I actually I think across the street isn't going to be much in and out traffic. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, we we are concerned about Route 5 and 10. So, um, and when you have events, you know, there might be much, might be more people coming and going on a normal day. I don't think it's a big issue, is it? What's what's your expected? No, it would be it would be a um, a drop in thing. It wouldn't be like from one to three o'clock. It would be a a long term thing um, throughout the day. So it would span the customers coming and going over that whole period of time. Mm -hmm. So you wouldn't have a mass grouping to come in at a certain time. But what's the what is the capacity of I mean, not, not in COVID times, but after COVID, what's the capacity? Um, well, we have 15,000 square feet to the building. So I'm not 100% sure what that relates to per customer. Would it be in the code review? Jeff? I believe it's... Yeah, I, I honestly don't know what, I mean, the... The, the anticipated number of um, patrons or, or clients compared to the square footage is is a little bit tough to, you know, I'm sure there's a there's a max, maximum occupancy for the building, but that yeah. doesn't, doesn't necessarily relate to the number of customers that you would have, I guess. But I guess it, because it does relate to the parking spaces. I think you're, how, how did you arrive at the number of parking spaces? The parking spaces really were really derived from, you know, trying to maximize the amount of, um, you know, current parking space that was available. It wasn't necessarily derived by, you know, the, the business or the, um, you know, the use. It was really just trying to maximize the amount of parking on the space on the site. Because Jennifer, we do have. Is that a building inspector thing, or is that our thing, as a site plan review thing? The number. Oh, of oh well, okay. there's a couple things. It's the size of the building and then the use, right, Bob? Yeah. Bob, you want yeah. to? Yeah. I then, wasn't. Like I, I, I was hoping to be on the code review. I mean, I can figure it out, but I'd, I'd have to go by the square footage of the building. And then in the code, it has, you know, how many people are allowed per square foot per use group. So I got to, I'd have to do a little Because there's also an apartment. And so. there's an apartment. And, and I don't, I don't think we need to get into that. I'm just, I was a little concerned with that many parking spaces. It seems like there could be a lot of people coming and going and that got me into the whole traffic thing. And then on Friday nights, if you've got the, the auction place across the street, um, having people coming and going. Um, well, we close at 5.30 on, on normal, our normal hours, we close on 5.30. Mm -hmm. We 
we're talking in the summer months to close a little later one day. A week. So it's not going to be a seven day a week closing at a later period. Um, so during the times that we would be closing would be the times where across the street would be opening. So that might make it a uh, little easier to. And I, I raise these, like I don't, I don't want us to put too many conditions on, but I think it is something that as a town we want to look at. And I'm not sure how to, you know, we don't want to mess with your business, but we just want to be careful. So Jennifer, how can we do that? I was just thinking like if there was something that she closed off, like with a, like a rope or, you know, a chain to not Oops, allow part you. me. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, if you could rope off the entrances and the exit. So like there's no parking in there and that could be a condition that just says after 530, there's no parking. You know, so that people from the oh. auction house aren't. Oh, um, I, I would say it's, I wouldn't, sorry, I wouldn't agree to that. I think, I don't think that has such, oh, I'm not sure. Why would that matter? Because if you were worried about traffic and people crossing the road to the antique or to the auction house or. Well, they, they, I think they do that already. We don't want to stop they that. They do that now. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That, that would upset people if you closed off that parking. I don't know what Dale's relationship is going to be, but I don't want to. I don't think the town should get in the way of that. Yeah. There wouldn't be any place to park, and it would be more of a traffic hazard if they couldn't park there. Yeah, okay. Actually. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, you know, I'm just thinking if if you both had events at the same time, you know, maybe that's when you need someone with a flag or you know that's coordinating. That's the only time. Yes. Yeah, that's the only thing. But yeah, yeah I agree. You know, I think in general, your hours being different than theirs is, is, is fine, so. Okay. okay. Good. Um, and then, uh, did we talk about lighting? I think, um, I hope any new light should be pointing. Yeah, any outside lighting should be pointing down. Yes, there's already uh, signage lights going down on the side, one on the front, and one on the back. It doesn't go up, it goes down from the top. So it kind of umbrellas the sign. Mm -hmm. And you've talked about um, the water issues already and not, nothing's changing too much there. Well, you're paving, so that's... Um, Jennifer, did you see... We're not... This doesn't require stormwater, right? No. Uh, no. But, but any any extra water that's going to be on because of the new pavement has to stay on the property. So. Bob, do you know anything about that? Can you speak for that? Is it's already I, gravel, right? So it's already- Yeah, but I, I didn't think you were paving it. They're not paving we it, weren't. they're just gonna keep it gravel. Yeah, they're not gonna, there's not gonna be new pavement. All right, so good. I knew the site wasn't really changing for stormwater. Yeah. Correct. All right, so um, Jennifer, anything else we should be paying attention to? Or Deliveries, like everything else, like is there, and I asked Bob, a, I sent him a text. I was just said, what about outdoor sales and how does that work in this area? Cause I know there's something in the bylaw about that. Um, I just not sure. It where. really just says it it's part of the special permit requirement, but I don't know what that entails necessarily. Cause I think it's the conditions that could be put on by the zoning board. Okay, um, and just, so you said two, I think that we would need to just specify within your site plan, the, the location, because it doesn't show it on the site plan, um, location of the tents and how big are the tents and that mm -hmm. they're temporary and, you know, just set some sort of guideline that if it ends up being that they're uh, larger and need to be permitted, because like Bob said, there's a, a small tent, a 10 by 10 tent does not require uh, a permit. Okay. Um, if, if I wanted to do something different, then I would just come to the board and, and do this all over again, correct? If, well, you if would I say was that say, we have this change to the site plan. So now yeah. you're going to have yeah. something that's um, okay. more permanent. 
So um, is there any lighting on the um, building itself or just on the sign? And you're not adding anything new? I'm not adding anything new at this moment. Um, there, yeah, lantern lights on the side of the door like a residential building. And I think there may be a light on the back corner. I'm not 100% sure. Um, but what you're saying is if there is lights, they have to be aiming down. They can't be aiming out like into the traffic. Is that right. correct? Yeah, or even on to, you know, if there's a residence behind you, I mean, yeah, because I'm the one who's going to have to come deal with that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, and I'm not, I'm not seeing, and again, we didn't, you know, we didn't want to put you through too much, but usually we see where the dumpsters are, for example, and what the program is with that and Deliveries, dumpsters, yeah. plantings. The, oh, you should have received the um, letter from Milnick Landscaping. I had sent that to you. And yeah. he's going to be redoing the, the shrubs in the front and putting rose bushes in under the windows and seasonal plantings. Um, as far as deliveries are concerned, we don't have big deliveries. Oh, um, except for vendors bringing product into their own product to the loading area. Um, so that's done by each individual vendor. Um, but we don't have any big deliveries that are made um, like a big truck coming in, like a, you know, a big 18 wheeler or anything like that. That doesn't happen. Um, but yeah, you let me know if you didn't get that letter from Melnick's, um, but you should have received it. that last week, actually. Oh. It, may, it may be on our website. If it can, Did you send it to Sue or to me? I believe I sent it to you because it was after our last meeting. <laughs> let me look. <laughs> <laughs> We had the first letter, but I don't remember getting a second letter from Melnick. Yeah. yeah, there was two, they were two pretty much close together. One was okay. just the generic and the other one had plowing on it, right? The second one, second one had plowing and what they were gonna do with the shrubs and um, seasonal plantings and keeping it maintained. Okay. I can send that around to the board. I find it. So just to remind the planning board, we have to do a, uh, when we take a vote on this, we got to do a decision and um, just sort of if there's any conditions or any follow up. Um, again, we, I think we said from the beginning, we're, we're, we're kind of excited and Dale, we're happy you're reusing a building that exists and you're not changing the shape of the building. So we wanted to kind of encourage that. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, Bob's gonna look at all the code issues and everything, so. Yeah. Um, and you should, re you should have that from, um, oh, I don't have the name of the guy, um, Josh, Josh Smith, I believe he's from the place on Coates Avenue right there in Deerfield. The I'm sure I'll, I'll be able to look at it tomorrow or, you know, start reviewing it tomorrow. But, but I, I didn't that, get it. You got that. I, I didn't get right it today. To I got it. I didn't send it to Bob, okay. but I will give, a, okay. give it all. I just okay. sent it to the board because it was 530 and yeah, I was. And, and yeah. In, in my defense on my tardiness on that, it's been awful trying to get someone to come and do this on such short notice. Jeff, thank you very much for stepping up to the plate on that. I truly appreciate it. Um, and the first person that we had come out to do the review, did the review for the codes and heard his back that night. And I had to go back to the drawing board and find somebody else to go in and take his place. So it's, it's been an adventure. So my, I guess I'm, I'd be willing to make a, a motion here, but I, I just do want to, 
Bob, is that something you could sort of follow up on is that the driveways, whether they should be an, an entrance and an exit versus, or should we decide that right now? I think that, I mean, that's a little out of my league. I mean, it might be a good question to run by the police chief, uh, but it's not really my yeah. department. Yeah. And and I don't know if we did send this around to the different departments, it would be you know often the DPW or the police chief, uh, fire chief. I mean, that's partly code stuff too, the fire stuff, obviously. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm not, I mean, I that, that end problem. of the building, the code and the fire, I, that'll take care of part, like, as far as pulling out on the highway, that's not my yeah. wheelhouse at all. Yeah. So, so maybe we can do that. Then uh, our our decision could be conditioned on the approval of the police department on the traffic issues, something like that. Planning board members, any other input questions? John, what? Yeah. Conditions that you have right now, or the possible conditions? I, I, you know, I think kind of we want a little bit more where things are, the dumpster, the plowing thing. But I guess that's there. Correct. Maybe haven't There's seen it yet. There's a dumpster currently there in the back, yeah. uh, by the back cor north corner. Um, I don't know if that's where it's supposed to be or not, but that there is one there now. Yeah. And then you know the outdoor sales and the lighting. That's all kind of we already have that in the town. I think code stuff, but. But I would just say the traffic would be the main thing and whether there should be one entrance and one exit versus each of those okay. openings being both ways. That, that's my only question okay. at this point. Okay. Max, anything? Where did Max, yeah. is Max? Uh, being that it's an existing condition and they're not changing the entrances, I think you'd be have a hard time, you know, making a making a case i mean there's so many along that road already that don't have that that have two um but then what? but they're and they're not designated yeah one way or the other i think it just it's worth asking the police chief just to look at it but i don't know that we can cite this one spot any more than another i that I mean, I would say that we could, if it, if it is a health and safety thing, if, if the traffic is getting more frequent, you know, if there's more tra traffic than it was 10 years ago, then I think it's it's incumbent upon us to to review that, that's all, so. Well, I think then, I think that that's a condition that we wanna be sure that we have a, a sign off from the police chief to look at it for traffic. Yeah. That, that's yeah. their really what- Yeah, that's, that's all it is. It's a sign, let's say that a sign off from the police. Jennifer? I just uh, wanted to make sure then the plan is looked at if you're going in and out because of where all those parking spaces are that somebody takes a look at that that there's enough clearance and it's just something to Bob or whoever to look at for or the police. Because Jeff you could you answer that question. Yeah, I mean the, the curb cuts now are probably I'm going to guess 28 or 30 feet wide um, from, from curb to curb, um, the two of them. So I, there's, there's certainly more than enough room for, you know, two-way traffic. Um, you know, I can't answer the question as to whether it's, you know, safe enough under current conditions or proposed conditions, but I can certainly say that, you know, there's, given the site distance and the width of those curb openings that there's, you know, I, I don't have any concerns that people can exit and enter safely. Um, you know, if, if there's multiple events going on, you know, nearby and on adjacent properties, it may be a different story, but at least for for the purposes of this site um, and its ability to function and, and get traffic in and out of there, it seems um, it seems certainly adequate to me. Bob. Okay. Thank you. Yep. All right, do we wanna make a motion? Look at the map. We're, we're moving on the special permit. Um, site plan. Site plan review. I mean, sorry. Site plan review. That's yeah. what I'm asking. Yeah. Yes. And we we're looking at a condition of 
a review by the chief of police. And yeah, are we looking for a further anything further from the applicant in terms of information other than I don't know. It seems like to me the plan is pretty detailed. It's you know it's yeah. sufficient. All so right. So I move. Motion? I move that we um, vote. See, I can't remember if you endorse or we approve. Approve. Like, this one we approve. I think we approve. This. I always throw me off. All right. Vote to approve the site plan review for. Um, yep project with the condition that there is a review by the chief of police. Let's just say for traffic flow. For, yeah. traffic. In, in and out of for traffic flow. Yeah, great. Okay. Good. I'll second that. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Denise? Ms. Mason, yes. Anna Lee? Anna Lee Wolfquill, yes. Rachel? Rachel Blaine, yes. Max? Max Andes, yes. And Mary. And Mary Cloutier, yes. John Waite, yes. Uh, congratulations, Dale, and, and good luck. Thank you. Hey, um, Jennifer, can you help us write this decision up? Yes. <laughs> um, so you. we voted Thank on it today. Well so very it's, much. it's approved as of today, but it's going to take a few days to get an actual like okay. document. But that Thank you all be. very much. Yeah, so there's one thing you have to do, Annalie. <laughs> you have to follow up <laughs> with Jen and she's really good about this. So you're in luck okay. and then you have to sign it. So right. that's important. All right. Well, everybody, at least yes, four of us. But four make sure that we all sign it. Bring it yeah. in. Yeah. Does that mean I'm your first? <laughs> we'll go down in history. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks, Dale. Good, right. luck. good night. See you at the ZBA, right? You didn't go to the last meeting, Dale. The ZBA meeting. No, I did not. I think we were away. Yep. I will go to the next one. No, you have to be on the agenda. So we have to check. So call Sue tomorrow and see if you're on the agenda because you didn't show up. So I don't know if they continued it okay. or you have to find out I'll because now you need to get your special tomorrow. card. Yep. Okay. Okay. Thank Email you. her because if she's working, at, we, we've been working. Crazy. I'll email her tonight. Yeah, okay. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Next agenda item is continuation of a public hearing, formula-based business bylaw amendment and formula-based definitions proposed by Deerfield for Responsible Development. I see some folks here who can speak to this. Where, where are we at? Debbie, are you the first or who goes? I, I think Tolly's going Tolly's to go first. There. Okay. And, and then Judy Hi. will also speak and I will speak too. We'll, we'll be tag teaming. All right. You're on. Thank you. Hi, Tolly. Hi, good evening, everyone. Uh, for the record, Tolly Stark. I live on Keats Road. Uh, I'm the director and the chair of Deerfield for Responsible Development. And I just wanna start by thanking the board um, for your discussion at our last um, hearing. Uh, there was a lot of great in-depth discussion um, that allowed us to kind of have some good takeaways. And also um, there was some requests that the board had, um, which we were really happy to get some clarity around. And we've come back today um, to address as well. And I also just want to take a moment to thank everyone for their service, um, especially you, John, now that you're leaving us. <laughs> uh, thank you. It's, uh, it's kind of sad for all of us, but at the same time, um, yeah, we all just have a lot of respect and appreciation for everyone that's stepped up to serve. Um, so I just want to take a moment and recognize that. Thanks. And um, so at the last hearing, uh, we discussed some changes to the formula-based business bylaw um, to amending our current bylaw. And um, so my colleagues and I, uh, we heard those requests and we sent you um, changes ahead of time, which I hope all of the board members um, currently have. And I know that the board was um, interested in hearing a little about um, these bylaws that some uh, other towns have similar ones of. And so we've done some research um, on that as well, a little more detailed. And also we have reached out um, <clears throat> to those towns to discuss that. 
And so um, we're happy to discuss that with the board tonight, if you would like. Um, and basically, um, we we had a lot of discussion at the last hearing um, about the exterior aspects of a formula-based business and what that looks like and um, how they could fit into Deerfield's current character. Um, so I'm going to basically just um, hand it over to my colleagues, Judy and Debbie to discuss those with you. Um, in particular, Debbie will discuss the changes that we made to the bylaw amendment um, in the hope that the board would um, adopt these proposed changes and um, include these formula-based business bylaws to bring forth for our town meeting. Uh, so I'm gonna let Debbie um, go over more of the details about the changes that the board had discussed and then um, what we've um, amended there. Okie dokie, I'll, I'll pick it up now, thank you. And thank you all. And just for the folks who are tuning in and a little unfamiliar with this, I just back up and, and uh, review that uh, we worked with Jeff Lacey, who is a land use planning consultant and has been involved in, in these, um, <clears throat> working on bylaws for communities, writing those things. Uh, this, this bylaw is based on one that is um, in, act, in action in Dennis and some other communities in the state. And I also just like to remind folks that this uh, bylaw draft uh, was reviewed by Bob Ritchie, who is an attorney, used to work in the attorney general's office reviewing bylaws for their, um, 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 that they, to make sure that they were uh, in, a, in accord with state law. So um, we've, we've had some vetting of this bylaw draft and it, and it is very similar to some that are already in use in the state. So just a little of that for the background. Um, also, when we were doing this uh, revision, uh, we took into consideration some material, John, that you presented to us, the 2008 draft. There was a draft of a, of a formula-based business bylaw uh, that was circulating in the planning board back in 2008. And in fact, it was, I think, the prototype for what became the bylaws that have since been enacted, and in a sense, the, the prototype for the bylaw that we've introduced here to you. So what we, we took a few things out of that, looked at it, and then, but we continued to use the same formatting uh, they are substantially the same. That, that 2008 version was very similar. It was very much of a draft. It was not a completed uh, piece of work, but we did include that into the consideration of what we were doing tonight. So um, just to go through, I had sent you all an email explaining what the changes are. We have a draft that's dated January 23rd of this year. That's the one you should all be looking at. Um, and key elements are that we've updated is you all had said you were uncomfortable with the references to uniforms. Um, that was one of the definitional elements defining a formula-based business. We took it out. We just said, okay, forget it. So there is no reference to uniforms in that. We did add definitions for the words facade and standardize. Those came out of that 2008 draft that, uh, that, that we had been given. Uh, just for clarity, so it would be clear what we meant by facade, what we meant by, well, by standardized, because that word is used quite a lot in the bylaw. Uh, in the table of the six definitional elements, we added um, a definition for standardized exterior decor and color scheme. That was added, that's item number five. So be aware that's exterior in particular. And if you'll notice, the definitional elements four, five, and six all relate to exterior features. This is, is important. We've also updated the language so that any of the six definitional elements can identify a business that's formula-based. Now, that's an important um, term. They, are, they can be used for, to identify what is a, a formula-based business. When you look at footnote 11, which we have as article two of the amendments, the language in footnote 11 has been revised 
It says uh, that to prohibit formula-based businesses that maintain the exterior elements four, five, and six. So that means any exterior elements such as uh, the standardized facade, the color scheme and decor, and the signage. Any, any, uh, um, any, um, yeah, any of the six definitional, um, excuse me, formula-based businesses would be prohibited that maintain any of those exterior elements. So while any of the six definitional elements can identify a formula-based business, the applicant or the developer needs to address only those three exterior elements in order to meet the terms of the bylaw. So I'm, am I making sense on that? So that was the, the effort then to focus on exterior elements rather than talking about having asking a, an applicant to change the inside of a building. That's not being asked for. Can I ask too, Demi? It's, yeah. but the second part of it is that uh, accepting the most northerly C2, can you explain that to me? Just yes, yes, yes. That's a sort of a different, slightly different element, but I just wanted to make, clarify the part about the um, no longer, uh, the planning board would no longer be looking at the interior elements and asking an applicant to change those in consideration, they would only be addressing the three exterior elements that are noted in four, five, and six. And just wanted to um, underscore that. The, the, yes, the, the idea then is that within all C1 and all C2 commercial zoning district, districts, accepting the most northerly C2 district, the formula businesses that conform to the definitional elements four, five, and six are prohibited. That does mean that in the C2, most northerly C2 district, formula-based businesses uh, could be cited. And may I add a clarification? They can go Please. in other C2 zones if they change some of their exterior design parts, then they can go in other C2 they areas. Can, right. right. They, they can, can be in C1 or other C2 districts right. if they have sufficiently changed those three exterior elements. Right. Does that? Oh, it changed all three or? Um... They have to address all three of those elements so okay. to, the, to the satisfaction of the planning board. So that's a little change from last time, I think. We we've sort of that, given them a we've yeah. given them choices of what to change. You had well, you had also expressed concern about um, address asking them to change interiors, yeah. the the interiors. So so we thought, well, okay, it's it's really the exterior things that are the most identifying parts of these yeah. kinds of businesses. So it seemed like if if they've if they've addressed. The, the signage, the, the exterior features in such a way that they are, um, that the planning board deems them compatible with the town and in the, uh, in the character of the town, then that, um, that would suffice. And then article three, just to finish out, the article three is unchanged from what we presented the last time. That essentially says we'll, we will put footnote 11 after these uh, various elements in the table of uses for, again, this is commercial retail, commercial retail food establishments or other commercial retail. And those are existing, those are the definitions in our bylaws right now in our use table, I think, right? Yes, that's they right. Match, in the should, table of uses, we're, we're just, a, we are amending those, yeah. uh, that would be amending that table with, there are already 10 footnotes in that table. This article two that we just talked about is footnote 11, yeah. would be footnote 11. All right. So, planning board members have any comments, and then we'll open it up to the public. 
Well, did you want me to fill in a little? Oh yes, bit? I'm sorry. Judy wanted sorry. to mention you because you had asked. Sorry, uh, you, you had, had asked, asked about the, the check in with some other communities. Yeah, you had asked about the experiences of other towns that have this kind oh, of right. bylaw. So, a number of towns started passing these bylaws in mid two thousands. Um, probably around the time Deerfield was working on their bylaw in 2008. So I talked to the planner in the town of Dennis and they've had this, basically the, the original bylaw that was presented to the planning board is the one that Dennis has almost exactly. And I talked to the planner in Dennis to see how it worked in, in Dennis and he, he basically explained, you know, though the purpose is not to keep any business out of town, it's just to um, make sure that the, the appearance of the business sort of fits in with the um, appearance of the town. And he basically characterized, Deer, he, he knows Deerfield, he characterized it as being historic. Um, he said that there are certain parts of, of um, Dennis where the, the uh, businesses can be located. He called them plastic. Those are the plastic parts of town. Those are appropriate for a formula-based business, but there are others where they wanted some bending of the, of the, um, of the appearance. So he said that, um, Let's see, if a youth wanted to come to town that they would go, they would start talking with the, the boards and they'd have a discussion. That's pretty much the way it worked. And that's the way it would work in Deerfield. If somebody that had a formula based business would be working with the planning board, probably as part of site plan approval to, you know, discuss what, you know, what these changes would be to fit in with the character of Deerfield. Um, I'm trying to see a look at my notes to see what else he said. Uh, one of the questions, I guess, was how it got passed in, in uh, Dennis. He said that there was a lot of pressure from uh, Dunkin' Donuts and people like that coming to town. And he said they used Dunkin' Donuts as their whipping boy. And um, that once the town understood that, you know, given Dunkin' Donuts business model, that they could have a store on every corner that they might want to try and limit the appearance a little bit. Um, Chatham also has a similar um, bylaw, which they adopted after Dennis's. And again, it's the same purpose, which is to um, basically keep the character of a town so it doesn't end up looking like every other town in the U.S. So that's pretty much what he said to me. It's been working very well in Dennis. He said um, the developers that come to town understand that if they're willing to work with the town on these changes that their, their uh, plans can go through in, in a very short time. He said actually in a day. Um, because they understand what needs to be done. And if they're um, not willing to work with the town, then it can take longer. So that's, that's pretty much the gist of what he said to me. Thanks. And they have it in different zones too. I mean, both those towns have other, other parts of town. They're protecting parts of their town. Right. The plastic ones can stay plastic in, in other words. Right, there are places where that's okay. Yeah, right. And that's and it was clear. I mean, the purpose is not to keep a business out of town, per se. I mean, you can't do that, can't keep a business out, but you can regulate how it looks, which is what the bylaw is intended to do. Comments, questions, Ellie? Yeah, so basically, if a business um, has all six of these criteria, then it must work with the planning board for criteria four, five, and six in order to meet our expectations of an acceptable exterior presentation. 
Yes. Almost, if it has any of the six, any of the six elements, not if, all of them, any of them. That's what identifies them. If, it, if a business has any of those six, it's a formula-based business. Then you can identify it as such. Oh, okay. Um, That's the identification. So, yeah. I just want to clarify that also um, that includes um, it's under common ownership or control or as a franchise or is one of 10 right. of more businesses. So once it's one of Correct. 10 more businesses and also has any of these identifying markers, then it is considered or classified as a formula based business, which then makes them um, have to be go in accordance with the amendment of the bylaw. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I'm curious how that number 10 came about. It's, um, you yeah, know, th there's no special ground for that number. So it's a, it was, um, it's the one I, I believe in use in uh, Dennis and Chatham. That's but, right. And everybody's it was in copying the, everybody else. That's, that's, that, how that, it yeah. It's, and it's in the version, John, that you gave us, the 2008 draft that, that uh, you provided to us, but that's that's all. That's uh, yeah. just what yeah. has been used by others. Yeah, that's right. It comes from somebody found one that was successful and that was successfully passed by the attorney general and everybody has copied the same one ever since. That's all it is. So I, you know, I, I, I work with small businesses and it's kind of nice when they have a successful one and they want to do another one in another town and I'm thinking of Hillside Pizza. You know, they they started with nothing and then they had one and then two and three. You know, if they happen to have 11 in Central and Western Mass, I'd hate to give them a hard time. Um, bueno, it's not the same. Bueno, so there's other examples of yeah. those kind of businesses, which, so I don't know if we want to up that number 10. Um, just to, none of them has the same exterior, either I, of those. Businesses. I would think that that's exactly the kind of thing that a small business like that, the problem, for them is when they yeah. want to sell it to somebody else. I don't think that yeah. that kind of, in fact, that's the kind of business you'd love having in your yeah. town, one that's growing and looking for. But you're right. They tend to use an existing building that has a different shape and facade and things like that. So it's, uh, yeah. Jennifer. Um, Lily Dwight has her hand up. Are you taking public comment yet? We are going to start to, so we can start with Lily. What? Yeah, I was just going to say though, John, there is nothing Oops. sacred about that number. I, I didn't think so, so that's why that's why I want to bring that up. No, but I I do want to just um, again a point of clarification. I believe that that the reason why ten was chosen um, from what we've discussed with the land planner and whatnot is it is a little bit arbitrary, but it's also seems to be a tipping point for businesses when um, they've expanded to that point and beyond that it changes from just that small business model and tends to be more franchise and or the economics of it change. Um, yeah. So I think that's why they were looking for that sweet spot of a number where it wasn't too high um, to where they were already you know, franchising or whatnot, um, but also not too low because they're, like you said, they're small businesses like Bueno, right. like Hillside right. that tend to be you know, below that number. So I think they were looking at those demographics, um, but we didn't get any specific data on that because we were curious as well as to why 10. Um, yeah. yeah. All right, Lily. Thank you guys. Um, I guess the point I just want to make is that uh, the examples you use like Bueno Isano and Hillside, um, I, in my experience of them, I believe they would all be wanting to work with a community. But basically, if they didn't, would they be good partners for our community anyway? I mean, the examples you use are, are clearly not it. But I'm just saying that I understand, John, that you're trying to promote local businesses and everything. But I think that we want to create an environment that people want to come into, but that people who want to work with our community because of the nature of our community, like treehouse sort of a thing. So I guess that's the point I would want to make. And I'm sure in the examples you gave those guys and gals would all work, be happy to work with the, the town. Even a Manny's I bet would. 
Thank you. Thanks. And, and I think part of this is I want to protect the planning board to some extent, the future planning board, in that we don't have to make too many subjective decisions. And the, the word standardized, I see you've kind of got a definition there, but it's still very subjective, I think. And uh, so. I, I inquired about whether there is a land use planning sort of definition for standardized yeah. and asked Jeff about that. And he said, no. <laughs> There yeah. isn't, and he said it's a dictionary. But yeah. uh, this is this is the definition actually that was in that draft 2008 bylaw. So we just lifted it out of that. And John, so it says on here for standardized that it's substantially the same, but not necessarily identical. So there are many formula businesses that have quite a few different facade fronts that they use in different areas, but yeah. yet it's still part of their basic standard of what they have that they offer, um, even though those standards aren't 100% identical all the time. And I know we've seen that in the recent history of Deerfield as well. So that's why there was some more refining of um, the term standardized and hopefully that um, you know at least is a good start if not needing so, to be refined some more um, to address that any other comments jennifer you seen anybody else no i don't see anybody else i i have a question though for myself just yeah. curious if what the size of dennis is compared to Deerfield, or is there anything that's more out our way that has a similar bylaw for our more rural communities? I don't think there's anybody out this way that has that. And Dennis is quite a bit larger, and they have a they have <laughs> part of my conversation with the planner out there was before I spoke to him. He returned. He had returned my phone call. He said. I looked on the website. He said, you don't have a planner. You don't have a building department. Um, there's, there's a lot that they have, a lot of advantages they have that Deerfield does not have. Um, we have a building department. I was going to say. <laughs> we have a wonderful Excuse building me. department. <laughs> we don't really know. I mean, just Dunkin' Donuts being the one, and now I notice them everywhere, how different they are, but the Haydenville you know, that was one that we were kind of curious about because Haydenville really must have held their feet to the fire or whatever, because that's a lovely little shop and um, they clearly worked with the, the town. Actually, I found out in talking to the dentist planner, that design is actually one of their designs. <laughs> so now it's standardized. Okay. Yep. <laughs> hey, yes. So um, I just want to reiterate what we discussed at the last hearing that I think is really important that um, because Deerfield is so small, because we do have limited resources, because we are more of a rural community, um, we talked about this being a really important tool for the planning board to use that would have um, great value economically, but also human resource wise to um, empower the planning board to be able to <clears throat> Um, give a clear path to an applicant or developer to come into Deerfield. And I also think that makes it very clear for whoever is coming, as I think Judy was saying before when um, we talked to the folks in Dennis, that they know what to expect and it's right there in black and white. Um, so you're kind of already starting at a certain level of expectation for them to meet um, as opposed to many meetings and going back and forth and not getting the information and having it be unclear. I feel like um, it's especially important for Deerfield because we are so small, because we don't have the same resources as Dennis to have some tools like this to use to pretty much spare everyone in the process um, and make it as straightforward as we can, but yet preserve the character of Deerfield, preserve the historic corridor of Route 5 and 10 um, so that it's not looking like anywhere USA. We have so many great things that bring people to Deerfield because they are different and because we do have the rich history. So I feel like, again, we're hoping that the planning board will see this as a tool you know, for Deerfield to be able to do that. So I have a question. Um, a lot of these, there's a purpose at the beginning of it. Um, did you have 
at one point, was there a draft with a purpose? Like, why would we want to be doing this? Uh, we did not. We could, right. Well, this, the reason why I wonder, to, there's nothing that has been removed because um, the one back in 08, you know, had a had a purpose it, and it did have a purpose. And I have I have two comments about the purpose. Um, one, no one will be surprised that I, I think part of the purpose is to encourage local businesses and to support our existing local businesses and not to, you know, not, not, not to say we don't want to bring in unfair competition, but to some extent, um, there is an issue there that, that um, large franchises can come in and put local businesses out of business. And I, I think that's one of the purposes here. Again, not saying they, they can't come in, but if they're gonna come in, they're gonna work with us. So that would hopefully be, be part of the purpose. But the other one I'm a little more worried about, and that is, is are, we, are we being, um, and I don't know what the right word is, but a little too exclusive instead of being inclusive. And I think Deerfield has an issue with that, that when you say we wanna preserve our character, our character is a very, very white middle upper class town, I think. And, and I'm not sure that's what we wanna to project to the rest of the world. So I would be more inclined to get behind this if there was also some other language that said we wanna be inclusive at, at, the same, at the same time we're, we're sort of defining our character, I guess. But, but if our character is that we don't wanna change, I, I don't think that's a good message to send out to people. So well, I, how, how would you incorporate that, John, into the purpose? I'm just trying to understand that, that because it's, I mean, I think actually when I think of our character, I, I actually just, I think of farms and working lands and forests um, uh, 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 rather than a than white middle class. I mean, I, I understand one can have different views of that, but how would you incorporate that sense into a purpose around a formula, um, the formula based bylaw? That's a good. That's a. I think that's the challenge. Actually, is and oh. and. But I think that. I think that Tali's um, recognition, and so maybe this is the issue, is that recognition of, and this, John, too, is, you know, part of how you exclude, is you ask for somebody to work with you. Can you work with us in, in our town? And I, I think you, 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 you ask that respectfully, but you still ask that. And I think that that's been something that we've struggled with there, there are businesses that work with and businesses yeah. that are less likely to work with. Um, and the ones that are likely to work with are the small local businesses that have come up through. Right. So I, I, think, I think that's the direction. I think the character of the town is really important, but I think that that kind of belongs to the moment in some ways, mm -hmm. right? And right. so we could, you could almost leave that out and just really make it more about businesses that are that are joining a community as opposed to businesses or, or integrating in a community um, as opposed to businesses who have less interest in, in being um, organized with other, others within the community. Um, we can certainly add a, you know, a, a purpose. I don't, I don't, I'm just scrambling to look for the 2008 version. Well I'm May I thinking. clarify something, John? Yep. Um, so when I say the character of the town, I'm speaking um, partially to the aesthetic of the town, not just um, like the cultural demographic of diversity or social economic diversity, but I'm also talking about um, that aspect of having the town not look like anywhere USA, having it have its own unique flavor so it can invite more diversity as opposed to being homogenized or gentrified. Um, so I just wanna clarify that when I say character, that's my intention of how I mean it. So I love that you're thinking of that because I think that's really important. Um, so I just want- and, that, and that's why I thought a, a purpose statement that clarifies because I think people of color from outside of this area, if they hear the character of the town, uh -huh. to them, it might mean, oh, they don't, they don't want different people here. Um, yeah. So I, I just by by having a couple sentences of purpose, you can somehow 
make sure that it's a, you're talking about this, this other character or whatever you're, you're mentioning. Yeah, uh, well, we can, we, can, we can struggle on that one. I mean, we can work on that as well, I, um, and, and, and create a purpose. And I, I do have the purpose that was from the 2008 draft. Yeah. But I don't, um, I don't and, and that has a lot to do about character, but we right. can um, talk about, we can try to work on that and present that in a future. But it talks about the balanced mix of businesses. I think that's like a balanced mix is a nice, that's more diversity oriented. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Denise, you had a hand up. I was just going to say, you know, we strive to have an inclusive, collaborative process in doing this. And that's, you know, collaboration is part of it. Yeah. You know, that's, I mean, that's our purpose, but, you know, I mean, it might be good to include that. Yeah. And I, yeah. Dolly? I, I have to say, I, I do suspect that. Um, you know, you can't paint every formula-based business with a broad brush. They are different. And they, um, even though they tend to be around maximizing profit and they have their own agendas, they're not all the same. There will be some that truly do want to come into the community and this would be a clear path for them to understand it. And there will be some that may be deterred from coming into the community because of this. Um, and those tend to be the ones, and this is my opinion, that are not so willing to work with the town and are not um, holding those same values and there to collaborate. So I feel like in that aspect, um, it would create an opportunity for local businesses because this isn't going to be for every formula biz based business. Some would still want to engage and some may choose not to, but I think it gives them either way a very clear idea of where Deerfield stands and our expectations. Mm -hmm. So I've been making notes on the some of the suggested language so that we can try to um, piece together something. So I think I do. We know when our next um, town meeting is. What's what's our timeline on getting this all done? Jennifer, do you know? You're you're mute, Jennifer. <laughs> Sorry, um, I think it's in June. Okay, so you've got, you know, you've got a month or two, not to drag it on, but. Um, They've been changing it, so. Other planning board members, I know a lot of our articles, I think we tend, to have, we tend to have a purpose just to kind of set the stage for why we're, you know, I think, I think for the solar one, we said, you know, we wanted to promote renewable energy or something, so. Yeah, I, I think that's great. And I, I, I would love to, um, have some discussion on that. And I don't know if everyone knows this or if you've been to DRD's website, but um, we promote development that supports a vital and sustainable local economy while respecting Deerfield's geographical beauty and historical character. And we care about ensuring cultural, social diversity, in addition to the human community, but also to Deerfield's natural community. So that's our mission. And when we were looking at forming this type of bylaw, that was the mission that we held in our hearts as we moved forward with this. So I just want everyone on the board to know, because I don't know how familiar everyone is um, with Deerfield for Responsible Development. And, and, and people reading this bylaw won't know it. So that's why it's important to put, put that out there. Yeah. Definitely. Can I, can I make a comment? I just was wondering, um, isn't that what, a site plan review is for the exterior, what, what the building looks like. And I did mention before about having a design review board um, so that it's not so strict and exclusive. Um, I'm just I'm just thinking of other communities. But we don't have a design review board. No, but if we You're did do something. We're looking at it right now. And I think that's part of the issue, Jennifer, is that right. it's not like, I, I'd love to bump this over to design review board. We yeah, but have... maybe that's something instead of, the, I don't know, I'm just sort of saying that there may be a different way instead of blocking business. I don't know. It just seems, but just my effort to some it's extent. Block, right? though. I think that that's the thing. It doesn't feel like it's blocking business. Yeah. It's, it's asking business to work with. But right. isn't that what site plan review is supposed to do? We and have like, not, we have, sure. we have struggled with this two times. Yeah. In, in the last five years 
And one time more successfully, but I think we could have been even more successful. And the, the second time very unsuccessfully. And so that's very frustrating. Yeah. Um, and it's discouraging to, to spend so much time. Yeah. And that, and so this is where, you know, unfortunately big box gets a bad name because it, yeah. it's like, well, it's okay, also looking at all. other communities and how they write their site plan review decisions. Like it's, you prove all site plan reviews and you list conditions on uh, facade and, and color and signage size and plantings and parking and deliveries. And those all become part of the condition of the permit because site right. plan review, but yeah. If but if they want to go to court, they don't have to do what you want them to do. So this gives a little more teeth. I think what Rachel's saying is this gives a little more teeth to the planning boards. But site plan review. It doesn't. Our experience, Jennifer. I know I've just never applicant. ever heard of a denial of site plan review before at Deerfield. So I'm just saying it's, I, it's, so it's yeah. I think this is, I just think this is great and we should move it forward. I think we should bring it to a town meeting. You know, there's gonna be discussion at the town meeting. So I, I, I feel like Deerfield for Responsible Development is doing your homework and you'll, you'll get to educate the public. Um, so I guess at this point, it sounds like maybe sh should we, well, the planning board at some point has to vote to recommend it at town meeting. Do you want us to wait one more week and you just put a couple more sentences to this and one more thing that I, I'm concerned about, and I, I don't know who else is on in terms of public comment, but I'd love to know more. DRG, you guys have done a spectacular job and yeah. speaking of service to a town, you know, wonderful. I'd like to kind of find out what, what a, you know, wh where, where are we going to find these bumps? Who, who's going to feel like this is, like Jen says, it sees this as anti-business for some reason or another and how come so that we can you know see those buoys and move around them before we crash into them I, I, so that's that's the only reason i would if we can timing wise go one more one more meeting and not to drag you guys out again and again but just because i I'd, I'd really like to be able to know more going so that we know what it looks like at town meeting that's why we're having a public public hearing and, and honest, I mean, from my point of view, I'm happy to go to another uh, for this to continue on to another meeting. And, and then that way we can work on a, a purpose. And um, I, I don't know, is there any way that, that to be able to submit that to folks so that we can get feedback before coming back to the next meeting? Probably not. But um, you have no, any we can't on? share that unless it's posted. Um, yeah. Yeah. Unless yeah. it's it, shared to the yeah, world. To the world, right? Which. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. I, not... I would suggest that it's just a couple sentences of a purpose is not a substantial change to the bylaw, so we don't have to start a new public right. hearing process. No, no. I, I was talking that I thought we would continue. I guess I thought. Yeah. That was... Judy's yeah. got to Yes, I have a question. Um, the statement of purpose, this where- is Judith does, uh, Kundal. Just say your name so if it doesn't for the Judith minutes. Judith Kundal. Um, wh where does the statement of purpose go? Because this is not a new bylaw. It's amendments to existing bylaws. That's a good, that's a good point. Um, so I think maybe it would be maybe something that would be presented as a cover sheet or something as an ex explanation as the purpose of the bylaw, but it shouldn't be part of what we're doing, I wouldn't think, because these are just changes to an existing right, their amendments. So what we're changing is the, is the use table and definitions. Right, correct. Yeah. That's already in existence. Yeah. <laughs> And the, whatever one you mentioned, the solar or whatever was a, an intent. Just exactly. Intent. That's what I was just looking at and things. Yeah. yeah. So you're right. So that would just be something that I guess it's really like you say, it's like a cover letter for your, for introducing the new. Right. So if you wanted, articles. yeah, in the article, you could put that as part of uh, like a flyer on the table when we yeah. are giving everybody all their materials so they can understand that. We could also put that on um, yeah. the website before town meeting as extra literature for people. Yeah. So that would be doable. 
I yes. think, yeah. including a you know just a, a set of um, uh, annotated yeah. uh, elements or annotations or key points or something like that to simply um, help define it a little bit better, clarify it so that people understood yeah. better. Yeah. All right. Good I point. have a hand up from Mark Brennan. Go ahead. Hi, Mark. Yeah, um, Mark Brennan here. Um, I, I would recommend that you um, somehow try to work this into the bylaw, the de these definitions. I think these definitions are going to be important 6, 10, 15 years from now when people are trying to evaluate these uh, bylaws and the spirit behind them. So I think that for the people who are here now uh, and the people who will vote on it, it'll make sense. I just worry about what, what happens 10 years from now. Um, and then the other comment I'd like to make is um, I, you know, generally kind of see myself as, you know, trying to kind of strike the balance of being pro-business, but also trying to kind of keep the uh, culture and, and community, you know, part um, intact, in you know, when, when I weigh my opinions in on, on things like this. And, and I, I do not see this. Um, and I think there was someone who was kind of asking about, you know, what, what do other folks in the public think? I, I do not see this as being anti-business. Um, I, I think that this is like others have said, are a really good tool to give uh, this planning board and future planning boards uh, a litmus test for, you know, evaluating um, how we can uh, let businesses businesses come in, but still kind of retain the integrity of our town. Thank you. Anybody else? Otherwise, we'll make a motion to continue. Uh, Lori. Just, just the two cents that we have as a town. Um, um, steered certain types of businesses being here by um, not allowing drive-throughs. Yep. So um, yeah. that was a conscious decision. And just the idea that even though they might, this might seem bold here, I think we are kind of at a tipping point with the Route 5 issue and that we, I think we do need to um, decide yeah. what, what, we, what we want the, um, the development, the future to look like plus the idea of a locally owned business versus um, dealing with an international corporation that you can only get a response from if you sue them um, is definitely preferable <laughs> to talk to human beings and not, mm -hmm. you know, corporate, so. Thanks. So I should, uh, can I entertain a motion to continue this to the, the next planning board meeting? I move that we continue this discussion of the um, proposed bylaws to the next planning board meeting on March, uh, mm, I was just looking, hold on. First. March 1st at seven o'clock. I second that, Denise Mason. That was Rachel Blaine. And is that uh, the proponents, does that work for you guys? Works for me. Yes, Thank that you. works. Thank you, John. All those in favor, Denise? Denise Mason, yes. Annalee? Annalee Wolfkull, yes. Rachel? Rachel Blaine, yes. Max? Max Santis, yes. And Mary? And Mary Cloutier, yes. John Waite, yes. Excellent. Thank you. This, I think, is shaping up to be very explainable to the townspeople. Good. Thank you. Thank you very much. I got to get back to my agenda. Next, um, A&R, One Cross Street. Is that, uh, did we get that in advance? Is that still on? I didn't see yeah. any. It's on the agenda. I know. Do we have the uh, A and R application? We have the. Is it on? Sue didn't send it to you. I am. That's. I'm, I'm asking. I. Oh. I didn't. I don't remember. Hold on one um, second. Let me look. I don't recall seeing it. I looked through all the documents that were sent, and I. I don't. I didn't see it. But. It was one email with several documents, but. Um, yeah, I could have missed something. But. I see. I see, Jonathan. You're here. Do you know? Uh... Yeah, it was submitted. Everything was done correctly during Zurich Sue, and she gave us all the information for this, this evening. Uh, we dropped yep. it off the town hall. Everything was done that we know of. I found an email um, 
<clears throat> that says agenda for 2-1 2021 PB meeting and mail from Sue. And there's two attachments. No. All right, I got one from uh, January 14th from Sue that has Cross Street on it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, it looks good. Okay. You know, there were three different agendas, so maybe I. <laughs> So if you have a building assistant email from uh, January 14th at- um, No, I got rid of- What time? At 10.15 in the morning? The setting is, um, the subject is a and R received. Yeah. No, I got rid of that. Um, corner of Cross and Grave Street. And I have a- uh, in our application, it looks like it was signed. It's to create a building lot, create building lot two. It, it doesn't say the fees were paid, but we'll assume that will get taken care of if it isn't. Um, yeah, Jonathan, can you can you give us a uh, just a quick overview of it? Yeah, we're going to make another building lot out of the land that I own right now. That's all it is. And yep. uh, so we got to look at the map and we look yep. at front so, we gap. It so we can just have it out for all of us to look. Can you share it? Do you have it, John? I, can I share my screen? I have it on my. I have one too. So I can, let me, oh, you got it? Here it is. There we are. Yep. Is that big enough? Can you Good. see that? So which is the frontage? Which is cross street is the frontage? It's right where the arrow is right now. Yeah. Okay. If you go up to the plus sign there, yeah. Yep. I got to go one more though because. Uh, go to the, on the right and you can scroll down if you blow it up. I know, but now you guys are in my way on my little screen there. I guess. Oh. <laughs> All right, I'm going to move you to the left. All right, so we just really kind of want to see the frontage, uh, the measurements here, and so, um, so that's what am I? Seeing? Oh, there's ninety and a hundred ninety. Lot run one's uh, frontage would be on Grave Street then. So wait, you're creating lot two, or you're creating lot one? Creating lot two. So that frontage yeah. is on Cross Street. Yeah. Oh, and you're saying that Grave lot Street one will still have a hundred feet on on Grave Street. Okay. And yeah. um, mm -hmm. what's our minimum lot size down in this area? Fifteen thousand. I believe so. Bob, are you there? Minimum lot size is 12,000. It is a legal lot. I looked at it with 100 feet of frontage. All right. And is there an issue with them? Um, that's a portable said to be removed. Shit is gone. Removed. It's been removed. It's oh, been good. Re yeah, it's been removed. Yep. And, and then the space between this lot line and the house is good enough and everything? Yep. That's, that's right. It's 10 feet or 20 feet or whatever it's supposed to be. It's 10 feet and that's 11 there. All right. And then where, so you'll have to put a new driveway in, is that it? Yeah, but, but yeah. We're gonna cut a corner. We're gonna cut a corner, I guess it'll be. Whoever, yeah, if we do and sell it and whatever we do with it, yeah, they'll probably put over there. Yeah. And Bob, that works? Yeah, I don't see any issue getting the driveway in there. I mean, that's, you know, driveway cuts from the uh, highway superintendent, but I don't see an issue with it. Anybody, um, planning board members have any con comments? Any, um, any other comments from? The I have a public? couple questions. This is Anne Mary Cloutier. Yep. Um, this is a very soggy, soggy site. Looks like a skating rink right now. Um, and I'm wondering like who, who's, whose purview is it to think about the drainage on this site? I'm not sure that it's ours. That's my question. Who? 
we are not um, saying this is a building lot. As a matter of fact, it should say on it that this is not a building lot. Um, okay, thank you. That was my question. Where um, usually it says it. This should be a building lot. It should be endorsement. A endorsement uh, over where my thing is no, over here is not certified that the lot shown on the plan qualify as building lots under the zoning. Building lot. lot. This place. Well, so that's good that we're thinking about that. If that doesn't say what you intend it to say, what do you, what do you mean? Well, is it or is it not a building lot? Isn't that what that says? Does not certify? Right. We do. We are not certifying it as a building lot. So he would. The owner would have to go and if they oh, wanted I thought to build the applicant one. was saying that it was supposed to be indicated as a building lot. I just want to clarify that right now. Oh, right. About, we are talking to you. about the building lot. This so, was supposed to be a building. Lot. It was supposed to be a building lot. Well, it, can I just make a clarification? Yeah, yeah. So an uh, an ANR distinguishes that it it is a line separation between the property. So it's a separation of a parcel of property. Yeah. So the fact that it meets zoning requirements for setback and dimensional requirements, that's that's not right now what the, you're doing with the ANR. Um, if it has water issues, that would be something that would need to be talked to by the conservation commission. And and that um, was that was my question, Jennifer. You answered it. It's not yeah. it's not us. Excellent. No, Thank you. no. So right now you're just deciding that you're taking this piece of property and you're adding a property line in it, and that the lot that they have their home on still meets our zoning requirements for setback, frontage, et cetera. Um, the, the, you know, the, the house size and square footage and such. And Bob has said that it does meet all of those requirements. Um, the second lot looks like it meets requirements at this time um, for square footage to possibly put a single family home, but the person who purchases it or you know, may say to the owners, you need to make sure that it's you know passes all the other requirements that go along mm. with it. So, um, but the purpose for an A and R is basically to establish a new lot line, Thank and you. that's why it says those comments down in the corner. All right. Yeah. Thank you. So do we have a motion? And Rachel, as you remember, we endorsed these. I was just gonna say this <laughs> I remember how to do this. I caught you. I move that we endorse. <laughs> Thank you. The uh in our um at number, what is it? One cross street. Sorry, oh, that's just yeah. tricky. It's number one cross street. Um mm -hmm. for the purpose of creating a second lot. Lot two, excellent. Um, do we have a second? I'll second it, Max Antes. Second, any more discussion? Um, I gotta get off of screen share now, I'm stuck. Oh, there it is, stop share, okay. All uh, those in favor, Denise. Denise Mason, yes. Emily. Emily Wolf Cool, yes. Rachel. Rich Blaine, aye. And Mary. Hey, Mary Cloutier, yes. Max. Max Santis, yes. John Waite, yes. Unanimous. John Baronas, I almost thought, I almost called on you because I see your box there every once in a while and I'm used to doing that. Um, all he right. He just wants to be here for your last meeting. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Next, uh, so um, Jonathan, we have to, um, Jennifer, how are we signing these things? Do we need, still need to come yeah, out? How do we go about picking it all up and getting it all set to go? Yes. Yeah. We so, need to, not by. Well, we're gonna put it out in the foyer again okay. and you guys can stop and sign it. And once, and Sue just checks it to make sure all the signatures are there. And um, then it needs to be, um, so an a &R gets, 
filed with the registry of deeds. So you would just take that to the registry of deeds. And once yeah. you file it at the registry of deeds, you would bring us back proof of the filing. Cause they, they put stickers on it and it's, they, yeah. So I would say we should all try to get down there within this week so that it'll be ready for next week. Will somebody call or email and say, hey, it's all set to go. I can, we can come pick it up with that, that's how it works. Okay, so yeah. I'll wait for somebody to call or email us and say it's all set to go. Then yes. we'll go get it and go from there and bring you back the copies and everybody else, whatever else we have to do. Yeah. Correct? Correct? Okay. So Wonderful. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you for your help and time and everything tonight. All yep. right. Good night. Thanks. Thanks for hanging in there with us. When See you later. For signatures? Annalie, I'm going to uh, tell Sue tomorrow that the NR was approved and that. Uh, she could put it out from the FOIA if she's working tomorrow. So I'll have her send out an email so you all know that it's because um, we've been working wonky hours at home and in, in the office. So um, I'm not sure if she's going to be in tomorrow, but um, I'll let you know. Thank you. I'm going to write a note right now. All right. Next item, public hearing, a special permit for a proposed project to construct a single family house with a driveway that exceeds 500 feet in length located at 264 River Road, Assessor's Map 136, Lot 7. We saw, I saw some plan yep. on this. Uh, let's see, what do we What's got? What's the date? Because that's helpful, because I'd seen it too, but I thought I it was know. We got comments. Where's the where's the plan? No. We get a lot of emails from the building system. It's also on our website, so and I can pull it up too. Oh, you know where. Do you have it, Jeff? And I've got it also, yeah. Okay, share it. Oh, cool. <laughs> Perfect. It's an Sorry, email. I didn't, to, I, didn't, I didn't want to interrupt. <laughs> it's an email from uh, January 26th, just in case anybody. Gotcha. All right, so uh, uh, Jeff, you, you've hung in there with us this whole time for this? Season? I have, yes, I have. Um, I, was looking, I was looking for Natalie or Luke. I don't see them here, are they? They are here. I believe so, anyway. They're waving at the bottom of my. They're waving at there they are. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> all right. So sorry to keep, sorry here. to keep you all up for this, but okay. It's okay. So just so you know, uh, Jeff and, and Natalie and folks, we we did a long driveway just last month. We haven't done them in years, and all of a sudden now we have two of them. So. A bunch of them. Wow. Very Great. very exciting. So yeah, just I, I guess real quickly um, on behalf of, of Luke and Natalie, um, this is for a driveway that exceeds 500 feet in length um, at, at roughly 264 uh, River Road. Um, I will actually the um, why don't I do this also um, just to give you a real quick uh, synopsis of where this is. So uh, River Road here, you can see running across the bottom of this photo, um, the, uh, the driveway is proposed um, roughly in this location here, there's an existing gravel drive to access some of the, um, you know, the cleared area at the top of the hill. Um, this, um, this plan, uh, takes that gravel road that you can see here under my cursor uh, and winds up the hill to where they're proposing to construct a home um, up in again sort of that cleared area at the top of the hill. Um, this is all an existing gravel sort of access road. Um, we are uh, we are widening it uh, sufficiently enough uh, to provide emergency access uh, with TR compacted TRG gravel um, and have done uh, multiple uh, site inspections with, with the building inspector, the fire department, police department, and, and others in town just to be certain that everybody's comfortable with, with the grade and, and the location of the driveway. Um, there's a little bit of uh, clearing that will occur on either side just to make sure we have 
um, 18 feet of, of emergency access, um, clear vegetation. The driveway itself is only 16 feet wide. Um, did get a, uh, uh, an order of conditions from the Conservation Commission, I believe last week. Um, so we're here before you tonight, really just for the, um, the, the driveway that exceeds um, you know, the 500 feet. So um, we don't plan any major excavation or, or earthwork. Um, again, the, the, the bulk of the road is, is already existing. Um, we're going to bring, bring up the grade slightly in some places to avoid um, the need to blast ledge and remove some, some ledge outcrops that are, that are um, you know, apparent in the driveway now. Uh, they're relatively shallow. Um, and so the goal of some of this regrading effort is, is really just to bring up the grade slightly to avoid having to you know, remove any of that, uh, any of that ledge area. Um, if, if possible. Um, there is a turnaround um, area up here at the top of the driveway for emergency access. This is a cleared area currently. Um, there's, uh, there's bedrock very close under the surface, so we're not concerned about, um, you know, vehicles uh, sinking in turf and, and grass. This is all pretty compacted, um, durable area. Um, and again, it has been reviewed by the fire department uh, and fire chief. Um, and I'm not aware of any other major concerns that, that have, have come up, but i um, happy to answer any other questions or comments the board may have. So I'm, I'm looking for the uh, comments from the fire chief. I have the police chief and the highway department. I will get those for you also. I, I got the comments from the Stillwater driveway this week. I created a form for them to sign off. But once again, I can attest that I was with them when we walked the driveway. And I'll get you the sign off form. All right. Yeah. I just had a question about, I know on the Stillwater one that we had, I think it was the first 10 feet had to be paved. Is that the Yeah. Same? I don't know if we discussed that. I was thinking that. Um, I'm sure the highway superintendent would like the same thing, but yeah. that was a recommendation from the highway superintendent. We don't actually have that as a bylaw. But. Okay. So our only issue is on the, in our bylaws, uh, Driveway regulations 3400, 3430, length, the distance of any driveway. If it uh, exceeds a distance of 500 feet, then the planning board needs to grant a special permit after a determination that said driveway will provide safe and reasonable access for fire, police, and emergency vehicles. So that's really all we're, all we're looking at. Um, so if we can just do it with a condition that the fire, um, we have the police, so if we just have the fire comments from the fire department that they're good with it, then, then we can be good with it. Anybody want to make a, any other questions? Anybody from the, um, was this a public? Um, Is this a public hearing? I'll exit. So somebody else has to do it. Oh, wait, is it, is this a? It is a hearing? public hearing. Yes, that's yeah. it. It okay. is a public hearing. Yes. Okay. Any comments from the public? Yes, there's one from Carolyn. Carolyn's strike charts. Go ahead. Hi. Hi. Hi, can you hear me? Yep. Okay, so we're in a butter at 269 River Road. And just one question is regarding any potential blasting. We're just, I guess, looking for reassurance that if that is needed, because there is ledge there, that it um, is not going to impact negatively on, say, our well or foundation. We just built, and we just want to be reassured that that will have no impact on us at all. Yeah. 
Yeah, so I, we don't we don't anticipate the need to, to blast anything. Like I said, there's some small, um, shallow ledge outcrops sort of at the at the existing grade of the driveway now. Um, the proposal is to is to raise the grade a few inches to with with compacted uh, trap rock gravel, um, with the notion that we will you know bring that up to roughly the grade that the existing ledge is at now. Um, you know, blasting is certainly going to be a means of last resort if it is if it is necessary. Um, you know, if it is needed, it'll be very small and isolated, and you know, for very small. Um, you know, very small areas. We don't anticipate the need to, you know, blast hopefully at all. Okay, so I guess it would not have any impact on our foundation or well. That's that's our concern. Yeah, I, I, I don't think it would have any impact. No. If it did, let me just ask that question. Yeah. How would that get remedied? <laughs> that's a better question. No one can get no one, no one can guarantee something, but um, Bob, do you know that one or? I don't know how you'd remedy, remedy it. I mean, other than a lawsuit, but in my experience, um, Blaston's pretty controlled. And uh, I mean, I even had one incident where a neighbor to a quarry in a different town was concerned about blasting and there was never really an issue. And, and that was much larger scale, I mean, blowing up a mountain. I would, I think maybe as a condition, we ask that the, um, because at this point, I mean, they're hoping not to have to blast. So if there is any blasting that they would um, notify abutters as, you know, that, that in fact it was happening and when it was happening. Um. It gets a little, oh, I guess, yeah. I mean, it's a special permit, so we can put a condition. That's not something normally we look at or get involved in, but. Um. Well, especially I, because I think that, you know, the applicant has pointed out that their intention is to avoid blasting. Right. So mm -hmm. there's no reason that the abutters would think this was happening. Right. Because they're hoping not to. But should right. they have to, then the abutters, I think, it makes sense that there's an abutter here who's expressed a concern. Yeah. Um, and I, I think that concern can be addressed with notification. Do we have any other rules in town, Bob, that you know of that? No, I'm not the, no. Oh. Yeah, so this would be a, and, and we're not saying you can't do it, it's just, just a, uh, an, an advisory, mm -hmm. I guess. Uh, sure. Yeah. Applicants, is that, uh, seems reasonable? Hey, it's Natalie. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this is Danny, Luke. <laughs> so uh, I guess I, I would just, Carolyn, I, we haven't met yet and we certainly wanna be respectful of the neighbors. I just, is that the purview of, of we're trying to navigate all of these commissions and committees? Yeah. Is that the purview of the planning board or the conservation commission? Oh, I don't so, know. I, I can't sorry, speak I just that. I don't. It's a clarifying question. That I just don't know, and so I'm just asking. Yes. So this, this is Carolyn. I was on the conservation commission meeting last week, and they recommended we bring it up with you folks tonight. So yeah. it does fall more in the purview with a special permit, uh, just because yeah. we can, and theirs is more specific. Ours is more specific to well. I think it could follow either place. We're just more likely to give conditions based on right. grant uh, permit granting. Yes, right. that's correct. Thank you. That's helpful. <laughs> and so our our question is in our condition though, how would we say, um, you know, does it have to be certified mail to all abutters or, or like what, what does that notification entail? I guess I'd want to be more specific if we're gonna have this. Um, and I'm, I'm kind of you know, note in the mailbox no, no well but if you send an email even you have a record of sending that notification and that person receiving it i mean is that not bona fide enough like 
I feel like that's a send receipt, you know, you can yeah. prove that you have sent it and you can prove that that person has received it. May I make a suggestion? Yes. Um, maybe if, if, if you said so many feet from the property and they could get the assessors, you know, a butters list to, to notify if there is blasting. Mm. And just, you can put that as in your conditions because I mean, you know, for, for hearings, we use typically the 300. 300 yeah. So, but I don't think that that is quite necessary for, but I don't know, you know, it's up to the planning board, whatever you would think would be a reasonable amount to just notify that there's this type of activity happening. But if they don't need to blast, then there wouldn't be a notification. Yeah. But it would be part of the condition of the of the the permit. Still doesn't get at the so by email. By email. Uh, oh. Well, the abutters list is a mailing. Oh, so it would be it would be certified mail. It would be certified mail. Mm -hmm. And Mary, you, what you said makes sense, but we don't have a mechanism for that. Right. That's the email. That's the problem. Right. Yeah. Well, whatever. Right. I think it is certified mail. Mechanism. Great. Awesome. Yeah. That way it gets to everybody's mailbox within whatever distance you as a board decide. And, and then you just fill out a, a butters list with uh, the assessor's office and she can make it up for you and you have all the addresses and everything, so. So maybe we make it, it's 300 feet for most of these projects, we could make it half of that or something and say 150, all the abutters within 150 feet, which is gonna be probably not that many. Um, Carolyn, do you know how, how far you would be? No, I, I know that our property um, abuts up at the top. And again, oh. we're not trying to be difficult. We just built this house and we yeah, want to yeah, make yeah. sure, you know, we're, we're not going to have any damage to well or foundation down the road. That's all. I, actually, I'm just thinking that notification doesn't actually help. <laughs> it exactly. doesn't help the situation per se, but it does help them to know. Yeah. Bob has a question. Well, I would yeah. just think, I mean, I'm just thinking that wouldn't the liability also be on the blaster themselves? Yeah. I mean, I, mean, I don't think know, it helps. Throwing them. that out there. Yeah. But I just think it helps the, because it may not even happen. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the blasters do it all the time. They must have insurance for these right. situations. Mm -hmm. But so that way, the abutters know that it's happening yeah. as opposed to yeah. not. I, that's yeah. all. I, I just. Yeah. No, well, good point. So actually, in this case, maybe we say immediate abutters. Because that's what you're talking about, Carolyn. It's really just the four, I don't know how many immediate abutters, it's probably only four or five or six or something. Mm -hmm. It might be even less. I mean, there might be just one or two of us. Yeah. And again, we're, you know, we welcome Natalie and Luke. It's just we're trying to protect what we've yeah, invested. Yeah, yeah. No, we, in we, fact, we, the, the we right thing, now we're talking about the, uh, a, a contractor. You're not even talking about, you're not talking about your neighbors, you're talking about- Right, and yeah. no one here can assure you that nothing like that will happen to your right. well or foundation. Right, and, and Karen right. and, and neighbors, I think that, you know, we're happy to just walk across yeah. <laughs> to let you know when and if that's going to occur, but I have no way of, it, to somebody's point, that just made this wet. I right. can't make a guarantee that. I know. And maybe you I won't might, have to even do it. <laughs> right. I think that's that's our goal. I mean, this road has been there for for since the 1800s, and we're trying to keep it as close to the state that it's in now, so as not to disturb this river, the brook that that we're trying to build next to. So mm -hmm. uh, we've been working with Jeff really closely to try to keep the road in the current condition as much as we can. Um, Jeff, I'm sorry, I don't want to overstep you here, but that's no, not at all. That's our that's our goal, and we yep. certainly we don't want to have a lot of disturbance here um, because we think it's important to keep it the way that it is. Uh, and and Carolyn and and I think um, Peggy Doyle's on the phone here as well. Uh, you know, we'll just if something should come up, 
and I don't know if you need this as a condition, uh, but as future neighbors, we would just come and come over and say hello, but I can't make a, I can't, uh, we can't commit that there would be no damage right. to, any, to anywhere if, if it were to happen. I, I hope that there would be insurance for somebody if mm -hmm. we were to get to that point, but Jeff, maybe you could speak Yeah, no, I was, you're exactly right. In, in improving, you know, damage or, or something that is extremely difficult. I mean, we run into this all the time with stormwater and, you know, if, if an adjacent property is flooded because of a uh, development on a, on a budding parcel, you know, it comes up quite often. Um, and, you know, again, it's, 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 I can't tell the planning board what to do, but I, I know typically, you know, with blasting operations um, and other things similar to it, um, you know, it's, it's, it, it, it starts to venture into, um, you know, a category that's a little bit out of the jurisdiction of the planning board, but I, you know, I certainly understand that, um, you know, the position and, and safeguards you're trying to protect. So, um, again, we're, we're all, 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 um, you know, all efforts are being made to, to avoid blasting at all extents. We just wanted to, you know, yeah. make, make folks aware that there may be a need to remove some, you know, some small amounts of rock if, if needed. So I would ask Rachel, if you, if we could um, just make, amend your motion to be immediate abutters or notified. Um, and I think we can say with, with any kind of confirmation. So if that's a reply to an email or a conversation or something, it doesn't have to be certified mail. Okay. Confirmed. You want me to say that? Confirmed notification of a butters. Is that confirmed notification of butters? I just said it. Is that good? Yes. Uh, yeah. I think that that's. Works. I amend my my motion. Of immediate a butters. Of immediate a butters. Right. Right. Hold on. I'm writing via certified mail because that's what Jennifer said. So right. I don't know about confirmed or whatever, but that's what I'm writing. Confirm, um, yeah. But we're changing the motion now. I and know, I'm keeping up. I'm just telling you. You got the new one? I do, you want me to read it to you? Yeah, just. Okay, yeah. Blaine moves to approve a special permit with the condition that the applicant receives approval from, oh, no, also if blasting is required, the applicant will would notify the immediate abutters via certified mail. Is that it? Can I ask you a question? <laughs> well, we were gonna change the certified mail to. Um, but that's what Jennifer said. Jennifer said that it would be according to the abutters list and the way that we do that is via certified mail. Is that for lot six and seven or just lot six? <laughs> oh, that's a, yeah. Whichever yeah. lot the blasting occurs on. Yeah. Right. So we haven't, the, the new, what we're trying to build on is a, it has a little bit of seven, lot seven on it. It doesn't actually impact. <laughs> I don't think that's been differentiated in the motion. So if you guys are going to blast, you guys are going to notify your abutters is the way. Yeah. And I, it seems is like it's only going to be in that one spot along the road. Bob, Bob has his hand up. Yeah. I, I just, yeah. just on to speak for Natalie, um, I think what she's saying is that lot seven involves a lot more abutters. That, that may that, not be impacted at all. So I'm just trying to yeah, see. I mean, it starts from. to get into a yeah. different part of town. Yeah. Okay. So that's why I thought the, the lot where the blasting would occur, it's the abutters to that lot. Right. So that, does that work? And Mary, you're muted, I think. I'm kind of talking to myself. Hold on. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Doesn't okay. it, Jeff, isn't the blasting only in the, it seemed to me you were talking about it only in the one place. That's, there's there's only a couple of places that, that exposed ledge have been identified. And so. And that's only on and lot six. I'm trying to find, I just lost it on my, <laughs> my yeah. hand. Here, but. So we could say lot six. I think Natalie, you're, you're right. I think that's a good, good point. I think that specifying it then 
it 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 makes it pointed to those who for whom we're, we're who we're concerned about, right? Yeah, where it might be closest. Yeah. I'm amending again. Lot six. Boom. Okay, so this is how it's reading, everybody. Um, if lot six requires blasting, the applicant would notify the immediate butters via certified mail. Is that what we're all trying to say? Okay, then I second that motion. At owner's expense. Oh, yes. No, at the town's, yeah, yeah. Sorry, expense. Natalie. <laughs> it may not well, even happen. No, <laughs> it won't happen. Hopefully, the, the, it's all just contingency. All right. But just so it's clear. All right, and and Mary, you also have the uh, confirmation from the fire department. Yes. Do you want me to read the whole thing back to you? Sure. Blaine moved to approve a special permit with the condition that the applicant receives approval from the fire department. Also, if lot six requires blasting, the applicant would notify the immediate abutters via certified mail at owner's expense, at applicant's expense. That. Moved by Rachel, seconded by Ann Mary. Any other comments? Um, those of could I, I'd like to approve the permit, but the, you, we're, we're writing new rules. I mean, the, the blaster has to get a permit with the fire chief and the fire chief has to have, you know, a certificate, you know, that says the blaster's got insurance and, you know, no, we're- Nobody said any of that actually. Well, no, it's- that you again? Right, well, if you're gonna blast, you gotta ask the fire chief and the fire chief gives you a permit. Right. So, I mean, we're writing, we're writing new regulations in Deerfield. So I'm just, I'm just, Looking at the precedent, you know, I don't know, but but the, does There's any of that regulations in existence already? But does any of it notify a butters, Max? Well, I'm just saying I'd like to vote for the project, but I'd like to not vote for this condition, and I don't want to vote against the project by voting against the condition. So could we vote on the conditions separately? I don't think so. Okay. Well, that's it. I mean, you could make another motion and then we could see if, um, you know, if your motion without the condition is approved. But I, I guess I'm not sure what the problem so is. So what you're saying, Max, is that you think that just to, it's enough to for the blaster to blast away no and i'm saying the blaster has to get a permit from the fire chief and the fire chief has to require him to present a certificate of competency and right. it, um, he might if it's within it, 250 feet is the distance you know he might require and i'm sure the blaster is going to do some sort of like survey of, of adjacent property and but it's not, it's just not let it rip anymore. Yeah, I hear that. I hear what you're saying. And so, the, but the question is if, how do we as a planning board help, you know, and obviously, you know, applicant promises to be a good neighbor. I have no doubt the applicant's going to be a good neighbor. And neighbors are happy to be good neighbors. Everybody's happy to be good neighbors, but isn't that, a, isn't that what we do? Can we, um, can I say something? Yeah. Can we just like we had said in a previous meeting, you know, check with the police chief. Could we say condition it upon checking with the uh, fire department that they have all the right notifications and qualifications like Max was saying, cause I was unaware of that. Instead of saying that it's a condition of the planning board to send a letter to butters if they're still meeting all the requirements for the planning i mean for the fire department then that's a condition well that's not a condition because that's normal so that's but, i don't requirement no but what i'm saying is is that you get notified like the planning board is notified that i don't know oh the planning board yeah is notified what the fire department has said, like their comments to it. And how does that help the abutters? 
Um, you could say, is that part of, I mean, do we even know what their process is? Do they actually, I don't know what their process is. Bob, do you know? The blaster and the fire department? Yeah. Process? No, I don't, I'm not the fire department. I know it's pretty regulated. I mean, they're going to have to get permits and. Right. So I didn't know regulations. if a butters were notified with the fire department. That's what I was. I don't know that answer. Yeah. Um, I would. I don't know. No. Hmm. I don't either. I guess I don't see. I mean, if this is this condition is also met by whatever conditions that the fire department would put on it, then you're simply meeting those conditions. You don't have to do it twice. So I guess I feel like this is so singular and such an outlier that we're actually not rewriting anything. We're saying that this is something that in the case of, this is what we would like, this is what the abutters would like. They showed up at this meeting to say, this is, you know, we would like some sort of notice. We would like input into this um, uh, procedure. So I feel like Max, unless you have another, um, uh, way to move this forward, another recommendation, another, um, you know, other verbiage to put into its place. I'm not sure, you know, what the point would be into separating it all out. We just had this whole conversation about how to work this through. You're, you're taking your, I don't know, you just, the blaster, the blaster's license is, is being infringed, infringed on, impinged on. He's, he's a professional. He knows what he's doing. He's insured. He's taking precautions. And now we've got all the abutters. So if the abutters, so if the abutters are informed, then what? Uh, that's going to have a public hearing. No, no, no. So it's just notifying the abutters. And the reason why I think we came up with that is that that way, if, if the day after the blasting happened, if they noticed something was wrong with it, well, they could probably go and say, oh, maybe this is a correlation here. That's really all it's about. Look, okay, if it, if it's not a it's not approval by the abutters, it's just notification. Okay. And I guess I guess my only comment or question would be that if if there are already permits and and approvals required for the blasting, um, you know, is this additional layer really necessary based on it's, you know what we've heard and I you know I, I I liken this to sort of the conservation commission approval that we're all you know everybody's sensitive to the stream but again the conservation commission or another jurisdictional authority is the room responsible for making sure that you know all the insurances and and you know the the um you know qualifications are met um you know if there is blasting necessary um just to avoid you know multiple multiple jurisdictional authorities having control over a singular issue is, I guess, part of the, you know, a little bit of the concern. Okay, this is notification. It's not any kind of authority. The, the, the water can't stop it from happening. It's not a, it's a, it's a notification. That's, that's all it is. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, I'm not sure I see any issue with this. I mean, the applicant already said they were going to do it. So it's like. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, I think we're overcomplicating the matter. And I think yep. Natalie is going to do the polite thing to do and notify her abutters because she wants to be a good neighbor. To me, I, you know, I, 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 I don't know. Yeah, I, I think I, uh, the question uh, asked by Carolyn that it was, we were going to be responsible for any damages. Should that occur? I, 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 <laughs> I, I can't, and I and I like I said, we're trying not to do that. We're trying to keep the road in its current right. uh, condition. But that that stipulation, I am happy to to. And we are happy to walk next door and, and give notification if we ever get to that point. Um, and I don't know if this is precedent for the town of Deerfield when any, whenever any blasting occurs or not. Um, but I. I'm happy to give notification. I just am sensitive to the the, the request that we cover any damage being done to no, no. property. <laughs> Should something ever maybe occur in the future, so I'm I'm sensitive to the precedent. I'm sensitive to 
I, I want to make sure that we're following the rules and regs as Deerfield Conservation Commission Planning Commission has set them forth. I don't want any special consideration. I want to put that out there. Uh, I just want to make sure we're following your rules and regulations to the letter and, and do what we're supposed to be doing according to your rules and regs. So, so I would go to special permit section 5300, da, 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 criteria. It's, it's, um, we, we can look in, we can do a lot actually. Um, neighborhood character and social structures impact on natural environment, you know, so, so I think this is well within our means of, of a condition on a special permit is to notify providers. It, and it, it's really very simple. Um. You have a comment from Julie Caswell. Oh. Hi, Julie. Um, I'm not speaking for or against this idea, but I would just point out that if it is, if the notice is to be to the abutters of lot six, um, that wouldn't really address Carolyn's concern because I don't believe she is an abutter to lot six. 150 foot abutter or just a physical abutter? Uh, physical. And I don't think 150 feet either. I mean, I guess, um, you know, her- you get a notice. Right, she, I guess, the way I heard the comment, and maybe I heard it wrong, was that she's concerned about her new foundation and her new well, and I don't blame her. Um, and she would like to be reassured that there's not going to be any damage if there's any blasting. So at this point, though, so what, what it, it, and now I'm, I am curious, it, she may not be a butter to right. lot six. Well, um, and in which case, then the applicant will be a good neighbor and head over there and say hey so right. that that works out kind of well I and mean, it's not a it's not a um yeah and i and i well and just to finish my thought i don't think that any of us here anyone could assure her that you know um no damage will ever happen if any damage were to incur it might it, water would not be from the blasting like i i think she wants to be reassured in a way that maybe we can't reassure her you know mm -hmm. what i mean I don't think, I mean, I don't think we're reassuring her. We're just no, letting people know when it's happening, if it happens. Yeah. Yeah, no, I get it. Yep. So we have a motion in a second. I, I believe we still have that. Fire approval by the fire department and notification of immediate abutters to lot six. Discussion, all those in favor? Denise? Uh, Denise Mason, yes. Anna Lee? Anna Lee will call yes. Rachel? Rachel Blaine, yes. Uh, Max? Max Antes, yes. And Mary? And Mary Cloutier, yes. John Wait, yes. Good. So we will, um, Jennifer, can you? write up a special permit. Do we have to sign that? Yes. There you go, Annalie. Thank the, you. The all board members or just the chair? I believe it's every, it's a special permit, right? I mean, yes, all, everybody does. All right. So Natalie and Luke will do that and get it signed hopefully within a week or so. We have to all come down to the- um, Well, we have, we have, there's a time frame. Sorry, my camera's off. So there's a time frame to write the decision and to get it signed. So yeah. I'll let you know. I mean, we have 30 days to write a decision and then um, they, they sign it and yeah. But the main thing is it's been, the main thing is it's been approved. And um, yes. so one, one, other, one other hurdle you guys have achieved. So 
Thank, thank you. you and John, thanks so much for all you've done for the planning board. I'm You're sorry amazing. I'm leaving. I'm sorry I'm leaving town right when you arrived. So. <laughs> <laughs> You're amazing. Thanks John for everything. Good luck. I'll, I'll still ride my bike by your uh, by your station. <laughs> Thank you all. <sighs> Thanks, everyone. Next up. Keep losing the agenda. Chris, you're still with us, so thank you. Yes, I am. Accessory apartments, I believe, although I can't find my agenda. Yeah, it's accessory. Yep. All right. I'm sorry. It's 10 o'clock. Chris, we always do this to you, don't we? Um, how's everybody feeling? <laughs> I gotta throw in the towel. I'm sorry, Chris. Fire. Yeah. I, I'm sorry. It's ten. Can we just can we just make a see where we're at uh, for a second? Chris, tell us where we're at with accessory. Yeah. Power. So uh, we had a discussion uh, the last meeting, and I guess we were also really late at night, and and we didn't finish the discussion. Um, I don't think we made too many substantive changes to the bylaw. Since that time, I think I sent you out a, a slightly revised version of the bylaw, but also uh, a memo which summarized some new changes to the state's Zoning Enabling Act, which are really highly relevant to accessory apartments because they've now got um, a section in the Zoning Act about them. And mm -hmm. I think it's actually probably fortunate for us that the, the, uh, those changes came through before we adopted the bylaw rather than after because we can still incorporate them into the, the bylaw. So um, I think that's the most important thing to try to um, report to you, which is that, um, as I said in the, in the memo, there are, there are several things that I think are really relevant to the discussion that we were having. One is that there's, there's a clear definition of what constitutes an accessory dwelling unit in the Zoning Act now. And I think that you know, my recommendation would be that we use that um, definition in the bylaw so that we're consistent with the state zoning act. And that that definition also addresses some of the issues that we talked um, about at the last meeting, which were um, specific limitations on the size um, of the accessory dwelling unit and the percentage of the, the overall structure that it can be. Um, those are prescribed now in the Zoning Act, so that kind of resolves that issue in some ways for us. Um, the Act also enables um, restrictions on owner occupancy of um, accessory units, which was again an, an issue that came up for discussion. I think it sort of supports the provisions that we had in the bylaw um, originally that um, encouraged um, or rather uh, restricted owner occupancy of, of the units. And then lastly, um, the Zoning Act now addresses the issue of um, accessory dwelling units in detached structures and um, enables um, those by special permit. So that's, um, again, some guidance for us, I think, in terms of how we address that issue, uh, potentially. So I, those were the things I was hoping to be able to talk to you about. Um, uh, this is, you know, by all that we were hoping to get ready for public hearing um, at your next meeting. So I don't know if we're going to have the chance to do that or not, but um, that, that's where things are. So quick question, with these new state laws, do we need, do we still need the local one? Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah, the state law really kind of enables the adoption of, of bylaws like the one that we're doing. Okay. And 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 provide some guidance. So we're not we're still not ready to do a public hearing though. Well, my suggestion is that um, I can I can incorporate these changes from the state in, zoning enabling act into your bylaw and send you out another version of the bylaw that that has those changes in it yep. and then get a sense of the board of whether you're ready then to to go forward with public hearing we just heard tonight Annalie sorry we just heard tonight that the annual meeting might be in June so that uh, oh good still give us plenty of time go ahead Annalie sorry um 
Yes, I mean, um, it would be great for Chris to include the new changes with the state law. It doesn't address the question that he presented in his um, Jan uh, December 30th memo to us about the special permit transfer. I think those were some, that was a really um, important concept to consider. And then also I would just present to the board, um, I'm on the Franklin Regional Planning Board um, and we had a meeting um, talking about diversifying housing opportunities and um, Alyssa Rolla Rose, who has worked with Deerfield on a number of our different projects, um, who was leading the meeting mentioned that uh, really strongly, they all suggested that um, diverse input is put into zoning and bylaw changes, recognizing that if uh, diverse, for many reasons diverse, uh, people's voices aren't at the table, then we don't even know that certain aspects of our, of, uh, that should be considered are missing. So I would, she, she the Franklin Regional Planning Board um, would, could also review these um, bylaws from uh, sort of a more culturally and other aspects, diverse standpoint at no charge. And I would like to see if we could let that happen too with the draft. Good. And they might participate in one of our public hearings, actually. Um, Melissa has come before, so we could oh, good. Uh -huh. maybe you want to invite her. Chris, was there anything else in your memo of December 12th that it has not been addressed with the um, new Massachusetts zoning regs? Because I thought that your points were really well made. Um. You know, I think you're talking about a memo from a different Chris. Um, Chris Harris, I think. Oh, something. You're right. Um, yes. Right. Who is still right. you? <laughs> Sorry, Chris. <laughs> That's okay. So you did, but Chris, you did see those comments, and I think you. I did, and That's and again, some of those comments are the same comments that I was just addressing with right. the. Enabling, enabling it. But Annalie is right. The special permit transfer issue was one of the things that Chris Harris brought up in his notes, and he was concerned about um, the requirement that that, that transfer um, have, have to be reauthorized with the change of ownership. Um, my perspective is that um, a lot of communities have adopted these bylaws with that provision in it. It's pretty commonplace. Um, it seems like there's good reason to have it. Um, I don't think it's an unusual and hard hardship creating provision myself. All right, so that's a good plan is to, if you can send these around and then um, schedule a public hearing probably. So I don't know if you were here at the beginning of the meeting, Chris, but Annalie is, is gonna be the new chair in the next three minutes when we close this meeting. <laughs> yes, I, I was I was here for that. <laughs> so if you could um, if you could you know send it around everybody, of course, but work with her on, on the next steps, that'd be great. Could I, have, should, could I have Alyssa LaRosse also from uh, the Franklin Regional Planning Board take a look at the drafts, just and let us know some of her thoughts prior to our next meeting? Is that okay? Yep. It would be appropriate. She, you know, she was involved with the housing production plan we did several years ago. Rachel was part of that. Some, some other people, and uh, yeah, I think should be good. Okay. Um, could could I ask um, one other one other question while I while I have a minute of your time? Yeah. Um, I, I've also completed um, the other two bylaws that we have discussed at various occasions. Um, the solar bylaw and the site plan review amendments. And um, those are ready for your review. I've, I have sent you copies of them. Um, so I'm hoping that um, maybe your, your workload slows up a little bit and we might have a, a working meeting to go, th go through those at some point. Our next meeting, we have the, um, there, you know, the formula, we could ask, really do the formula later. We spent a lot of time with that. And these other ones are, so if we yeah. start with this, I think 
that would really be helpful not even yeah. waiting because i think we keep waiting and stuff keeps happening yeah i was going to say the same thing we should do this first next time because it always gets shortchanged, and i think it's really important yeah thank you that would be really helpful to me as well oh you don't like sitting through three hours of meeting to get <laughs> I was getting work done, but it's it's a long time to wait. <laughs> I'm, I'm surprised Chris didn't put his name in for the next planning board. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Are we so um, Mr. Top Chairman, of the, top of the agenda, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Who's that, Bob? You're still with us. I'm still with you. I just want to say I sat through your whole meeting tonight. And I want to thank you for your patience, okay? And I wish you good, good health and and, and what have you in your new endeavor, okay? We don't always agree. A lot of times we disagree, but I think I let you know where I agree and where I disagree, okay? Thank All you right. very much. We've had some good, honest discussions. Yes, and uh... yeah, and the I think that that where that road was going down the river road tonight, that came up. 40 years ago, that was co to connect with Becumptic Drive and come all the way down. That was an old town road yeah. from what I understand. Right. Oh, and it was a big to do over it, okay? But I've driven up it years ago, but that was a subdivision that was whole rigmarole on it uh, probably 40 years ago, it's so. Better that it's a driveway. Yeah. Very much so, okay. <laughs> Thank you, John, for your service. Thanks, Bob. Take care. Right. So I think we're ready to adjust. So we're going to have these are the top of the next agenda. Anna Lee, I'll, um, Sue usually sends that to me for you know to look at with vice chairs and and, and Mary as well. So date for the next meeting <laughs> March first. Okay. 7 p.m. John, I wish you the best as well, and thank you for all your service and, and great work. Thanks, and you too. And I want to thank the planning board. I got a delightful uh, email from you guys. Uh, email cards these days seem to work, and, and a lovely <laughs> present, so I greatly appreciate that, and I I wish you all well, and as I said, you know, please keep in touch. I, I Someone from the recorder was asking me the other day. I said, "Yeah, I'll probably look over their shoulders once in a while." So uh, you you might as well ask me questions too if you want to, but I'll stay out of your business. Motion to adjourn. I so move. <laughs> second. I second. John. Bye. Thank you, Jennifer. As always, thank Bob for me. Thank He's you. Got, Bob got off before uh, we kept him on a long time. Tonight, oh, so. I'm going to be with him for hours on Wednesday, so right. I will definitely tell, tell him. him. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's right, Wednesday. Woo. Yeah. All right. Thank Bye, you, John. Thanks for everything. Thanks, Good, Good night. Good night.